after contact. And tonight he has an opportunity to get over the 1,000 yards rushing mark. And if he does that, he adds his name to the great running backs of the Denver Broncos. All right, thank you, Paul. It was a blockbuster trade in the offseason between the Broncos and the Redskins. How did it come out? The verdict from Susie Culver when we come back. Here's tonight's American Express game plan. The boldest offseason trade has panned out for the Broncos. Champ Bailey, the shutdown corner, has been everything and more, leading the Broncos in interceptions, unassisted tackles, and helping Denver's defense to a number six overall ranking. Well, it's all good for the Broncos now, but there certainly were a lot of doubters. Mike Shanahan took so much heat for the trade, even his wife Peggy gave him a hard time. But he had been an admirer of Champ since college, and Champ certainly wasn't going to let his coach down. Back in March, at his very first news conference, he guaranteed he wouldn't disappoint. On Friday, I asked Champ to assess the trade. Well, one thing you can't do, you can't just look at us personally and try to compare us because there's no comparison. I can't rush for 1,500. He can't get picks. One thing you do, you look at our team. I mean, what's the difference? We're winning. I mean, that's all that matters. That appreciation stems from four years of losing in Washington. They hadn't finished above 500 since his rookie year. With that as inspiration, he stepped up his game when he arrived in Denver, studying, tackling, covering. Mike, the difference on display tonight. And Susie, there are a lot of people who will tell you that Champ Bailey is the best corner in the NFL. ESPN presents Visa Skycam, innovative technology on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Visa Skycam provides some of the most unique and memorable images ever seen from angles no other single camera in the world can achieve, and we're excited to bring it to you each and every Sunday night. The kickoff from snowy Denver, bitter rivals when we come back. It has been snowing on and off for the last 24 hours here in Denver. Five inches of snow have already accumulated. Looks like more. The temperature is 18 degrees. It feels like six with the wind chill. And both teams will have to fight Mother Nature as well as each other tonight. And it is expected to snow throughout the game. I love a game like this. You know why? You're up here. I'm up here. <laughs> No, actually, you know, I really do. I, th I think that this game neutralizes a game. If a team is, has speed on one side or power on the other, it negates everything, and you just have to wait for the key plays, and the kicking game becomes huge. You know, another, the other thing that happens, Michael, is that I watch these guys when they come out to warm up, and they're, the guys from Oakland are a little tentative. They're thinking they're going to slip. You don't slip here. This, is a, this field is solid. It's grass, and it's been covered most of the week. Yeah, it's covered with snow now. Yeah, now, but you're not, they're not going to slip. Well, com coming out to warm up tonight is a relative concept. Redmond and Gabriel are deep to receive the opening kickoff. As Oakland will get the ball first. As always, they will have a sellout crowd here. People late arriving in all their snow gear. Coming in off the slopes. <laughs> well, they can ski in tonight. <laughs> Mike Anor to kick it away for the 7 and 3 Denver Broncos. And we're underway at mile high. Doug Gabriel on the return just to the 20. The Raiders offensive line set at one tackle spot for years to come. Outland Trophy winner Robert Gallery was the number two pick in the entire draft. Jerry Rice and Tim Brown are finally gone. The door is open for the talented Jerry Porter. Will he be the long-term answer? And a season-ending injury to Rich Gannon gave veteran Kerry Collins a shot. He has struggled without the support of a running game. And they are 32nd running the football this year, only 76 yards a game. The numbers on Kerry Collins, he has weekly as a running back behind him. And Collins on the bootleg on the first play and throws 
Doug Jolly, his tight end, picks up nine. John Lynch made the tackle. Denver's defensive line is working through injuries. Reggie Hayward, always a good pass rusher, is the sack leader. He has four and a half. Al Wilson, a sideline to sideline middle linebacker who's been selected for three consecutive Pro Bowls. And a lot of people question the trade for Champ Bailey, but not anymore. He's done everything they had hoped for, and then some. Second and short, and the big tailback, Wheatley, will get the first down. Tyrone Wheatley has been missed sorely in this offense. He was gone for three games, and not only is it just Tyrone Wheatley, but you've got two young guys up front. And when you ha to be able to run the football, there's got to be continuity between the offensive line and the running backs. As a matter of fact, Tyrone Wheatley said the young guys up front are going to have to get used to his running style as opposed to the opposite. Two tight ends, two wide receivers for the Raiders. Collins short set, pump and go. Nobody bought nearly intercepted. They're trying to hit Doug Gabriel, but Kanoi Kennedy was back there waiting. Kerry Collins has tried so hard to adjust to this offense, but it's really not just him as an individual. It's Norv Turner learning what Kerry Collins can do. When he took over for Rich Gannon, a different type of a quarterback in the situation. It's going to be a penalty against the Denver Broncos. It looked like illegal contact. What you see out of Kerry Collins, what Norv Turner wants him to do is move a little bit more. This is something Norv wasn't sure Kerry could do. You saw it on the first play of the game, a little bootleg, get him outside the pocket. He's evolving in this offense like so many guys on that side of the ball for the Raiders. Collins under no pressure at all, throws downfield, and that's caught by Porter. He gets out of bounds after he has a first down at midfield. This is a funny play because he was, he was trying to fake the Tyrell Wheatley who left. Watch Tyrell Wheatley leave. There's nobody really to fake the ball to, so he rolls out here as a bootleg by himself. Then he sees Porter coming across the middle. Now, we know that in Porter's case, Champ Bailey's going to be on him all night long, but this time Porter gets free coming across. And Jerry Collins, that's two good passes he's thrown. And both of them on the move, getting them out of the pocket, making it tough for Denver to pursue. It was just like an old-fashioned rollout. <laughs> Collins, good protection again, straight down the middle for Gabriel and knocked away at the five-yard line. Lenny Walls, the nickel corner, good inside position, and that ball just slightly underthrown. But yeah, but you, the first thing about this is look at the protection that Collins gets. Now you got two rookies on the right-hand side, but take a look at the time that Kerry Collins has to throw the ball. And that also, just good defense. Well, and Lenny Walls is also he's six foot four, so if he's going to get anywhere around the receiver, it's going to be hard for the ball to get through to him. He uh, actually was going to be the starting corner. But Kelly Herndon stepped in and has not given up the job. Well, the Raiders have looked sharp early. Justin Fargus has come in at running back. And Fargus gets the ball on the screen, slips one tackle, slips another, and then taken down at the 44-yard line. You notice, one of the things that happens in a game like this with all the snow, the things happen a lot quicker than they normally would. Look at how fast they get out here to Fargus in the screen. That that ball was out in a in a heartbeat. He almost got tackled in the backfield, but he got away. Fargus on that play really looked quick. And I think you have to in the snow. And the field right now will be fast. As the game goes on, it may get a little more mushy, but right now it's still very firm. J.R. Redman, number 27, checks in to the backfield for the first time. Redmond out in the flat, they throw it underneath to Gabriel, and Gabriel very close to the sticks. Lenny Walls makes another tackle. You know what, I, did, I just had to think about Kerry Collins, Joe, talking to us yesterday, saying, I had to get used to this offense, and now I feel I'm comfortable in this offense. Everybody thought when he stepped in, we did the game against Tampa Bay, and they won it. He looked so good and everything. Whoa, man, we got a quarterback. Kerry Collins is not done. He's, he's here. He's our savior. Well, it didn't happen that way for Kerry Collins. 
And what happened is he had to get used to them. They had to get used to him. Well, I got a question because I'm getting used to you. If they, <laughs> if they don't make this, do you go for it? Oh, certainly. Okay. I agree with you. Yeah, but they made it. Oh, my goodness. You're wrong. I can't believe it. Mike, we witnessed something very unique here tonight. Yes, we did. Something we used to see all the time. Yes, but now he's been so consistent. Must be the snow. Must be. Got in your eye. Fourth and inches. And you go for it. Hey, that I got right. North Turner sends out the big guy. Zach Crockett comes in at fullback. Warren Sapp is in as an extra blocking back. Something they did with him in Tampa. First big play of the game. And Warren Sapp is one of those guys, when he comes in as a defensive lineman, he plays tight end. He's on the end of the line. Wheatley. Oh, what a is? shot oh. by Al Wilson. Oh. Holy cow. And he stopped him. He stopped him oh. in midair. Are you serious? This is one of those deals where they always tell you, don't leave your feet. Do not ever leave your feet. Because when you do, you got a guy by the name of Al Wilson that's just about killed him. Al Wilson's going to meet him in a hole. 56 on 47. Watch. Oh. That's leverage. Boy, when you can get that kind of leverage, and Tyrone Wheatley is no small guy. They don't, if they didn't make it before, they didn't make it on this one either. What a rip. Oh, I don't, you know what? I don't think he made it past the 40-yard line, and they gave him the spot past the 40. Uh, if he didn't make it the time before, it's, it's shorter than the, was, the, the one before this. What a great hit. Going the other way. Denver takes over on downs. What a shot by Al Wilson. Stepped up, filled the hole, and turned back the run. Denver ball when we come back. Al Wilson basking in the glow on the sideline after his shot on Tyrone Wheatley kept the Raiders from getting a first down and gives Denver the ball at their own 40, first and 10. Ruben Drones, the only man in the backfield behind Jake Plummer. Raiders open the four-man line. Plummer with time, now he scrambles. And the snake takes off and slides in safely. And that will be 15 yards on Danny Clark. You know, when the guy's going At down. The end of the run, personal foul, unnecessary rough. The defense in the 55, 15 yards from the dead ball spot. This, this is a team that leads the league in stupid penalties. And here comes another one. He's down. Now you hit him in the head with Jeez. a forearm. That's what, there's where the penalty came. He hit him. No, no, no. Don't put your hands up like you didn't do anything. You hit him with a forearm in his head. Well, not only, you know, I mean, on top of hitting the quarterback, you could wind up with an unsportsmanlike as well in a personal foul. That was a, you got only charged with one penalty there. Well, the Raiders, who lead the league in penalties, get off to a flying start on the first defensive series. Ruben Drones for a couple. The Broncos have always had one of the game's best lines. Their leader is Tom Nalen, who could just be the top center in all of football. Rod Smith has rewritten Denver's record books, is now number one in franchise history in catches, yards, and touchdowns. And Ruben Drones became the featured back because of injuries. What a find. Over 100 yards rushing in five of the six games as the featured back. Drones again off the left side. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another. Down to the 31-yard line. That will be a first down. Michael, I said at the beginning of this show about Ruben Drones after contact, the yardage. Watch the yardage after contact. And also watch his feet. They just don't stop. Ruben Drones can take a lick. And he runs downhill. Look at this. Look at the power in his legs. Drones really a tweener. 220 pounds, 
was the blocking fullback until he became the halfback. Well, he's got to learn how to enjoy himself. <laughs> <laughs> Plumber all day. Oh, Four passes knocked away, and that will be interference. Asamoah just absolutely pushes him before the ball ever gets halfway there. Pass interference. Defense number 21. The spot of the foul. Automatic. Now, Nandi Asamoa and Joe, you're right. He started about five seconds early with the push. I, I think, it, for me, it looks like when you got a young guy like that in his second year, on, with the weather conditions the way they are and the field condition, he's not going to be able to slow himself down and stop. So when he's moving in one direction, he's just going to keep on going. Two big penalties have the ball down to the 25-yard line. This is Denver's opening drive. One wide out in the running back. Fumble, and the Raiders have it. Boy, they had it. Almost. They had it, then it came out again. Yep, they still do. The Raiders got it. You want to see Jake Plummer, you talk about sticking your head in there and going back after the ball. Ruben Drones doesn't get it, number 34. The ball comes out the backside. Here comes the ball out the backside. Ruben Drones drops it. The Raiders, the one thing you do is fall on the football. Here comes Jake. He didn't get it. Isn't that beautiful? The city and county building lit up here in Denver. They always light it the day after Thanksgiving. Wheatley and Crockett in there together as the Raiders take over after the fumble. And here is Wheatley, the 240-pounder. This time he bounces off a big hit and takes it out for about six yards. Back to the fumble, what happened? Well, when you look at it, Jake Plummer does a good job. He's gonna put it right on Ruben Drone's belly, and then when Ruben starts to transfer it to his left arm, you see the elbow out away from the body, and the ball just falls right through. Now, if you're officially scoring this, it goes to the running back, in my opinion. It's probably gonna go to the quarterback, but it shouldn't. No, because you're right, he put it in there. <laughs> It should go to the running back. I mean, he got it where it was supposed to be. Blitz coming. Still time for Collins and throws incomplete on his knees. Jerry Porter can't bring it in. Let's go back a series. We want you to see the huge hit by Al Wilson. He's wired for Sunday night. It ain't cold out here. Feel good. Feel good out here. They don't look ready to play. They look like it's too cold. He's a California boy. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Tyrone Wheatley wasn't in that picture very long, was he? Did you hear what Lynch said? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Another blitz. <laughs> Collins steps up. Now he'll take off. And Kerry Collins dives forward for the first down. Wilson made that tackle. That's an element of Kerry Collins' game that nobody really expects. You expect Kerry Collins to sit in a pocket and be able just to throw right from there. What he does is he has his eyes downfield, feels the pressure, tucks the ball away. Remember, he was a guy who had a lot of fumbles in the pocket. He's come a long way in protecting it. Now he's added rushing to his attack. Now he's not going to run away from anybody, but he gets positive yardage. That time he picks up the first down. Patrick Chuck Rora had a good rush on him, got away from the number one draft pick, Robert Gallery. Now back to the eye. Collins to throw again, screen to Wheatley. And Tyrone Wheatley very close to another first down. Let's check in with Susie. Mike, I talked to Raiders wide receivers coach Fred Volitnikoff about his guys are dealing with these conditions. Number one, it's the right shoes. The longest cleat you can stand, which for just about everybody out here is five-eighths of an inch. The main challenge is the strong winds with the snow. You've got to stay with the football on nights like this. This field is heated, so you can see it's already sort of melted, footing a little bit slick. All the guys are wearing thermals under their uniforms. The skill position guys have those heat packs in the pouches on their uniforms. The benches are heated. They'll wear capes to keep the heat in. Pretty standard for conditions like this. You know, Susie, it's not like the old Minnesota Vikings when they would stand up there in short sleeves, but boy, it's still awful cold. Wheatley, nowhere to go, so it lowers his shoulder on first down. Game tackled by Wilson and Donnie Sprague and came over to help out. There is an awful lot of speed on the Denver Bronco defense. And to try to fake inside like they do here, 
and then get back to the outside. Look who's out there. There's Al Wilson and the linebackers. They're all out to the outside. Sprague was there. Wilson was there. Those are linebackers. And it's very difficult to outrun the Denver Bronco linebackers. This team number five against the run in the NFL. And the Raiders have had a miserable time trying to run. Collins gives it off to Amos Zaraway, and Wilson will get him after about four. Zaraway making his first appearance. He has ex Pittsburgh Steeler. The lack of rushing has really betrayed the Oakland Raiders this year. 76.8 yards a game, and that won't get it done. But, but I think one thing North Turner told us last night is important. He said, you must be able to establish the threat of a run. And so far, far in this game, the Raiders have been able to do that. Yep. Maybe they haven't broken it, but they have been threatening to be able to run the football and pick up positive yards. They've actually run it better tonight than they normally have early in a ball game. Collins back to throw against the four-man rush. This one's underneath, intended for Doug Jolly. D.J. Williams was on him and forced the incomplete. And Williams, a good-looking rookie linebacker out of Miami. You know, this is what I'm talking about with the linebackers. You, you already saw what Spragan did. You already saw what Al Wilson did. Now, here's D.J. Williams, who is in coverage. He's number 52. He is the third linebacker. Look at this. Perfect timing, perfect coverage, I and makes the play. And I don't know if he'd have had the first down if he did catch it. Shane Leckler, who has the best career punting average of anybody who ever did this for a living. Going to try to kill this one inside the 10. Gets a bad bounce. The Raiders tried to save it, but couldn't. A 40-yard kick by Leckler, who almost got one down inside the 5. Nothing, nothing from Denver. Five minutes, 40 seconds to go. First quarter in snowy Denver. The Broncos take over from their own 20. Jake Plummer leads them out. They moved the ball the first time very well until a fumble cut the drive short. Plummer on the play fake. Good protection again. Can't find anybody. Scrambles. Throws near sideline. That's complete for about eight. We talked about Jake Plummer and how there was always this raging debate when he played at Arizona and lost so many games with the Cardinals. How good was he? Was he just surrounded by a bad team? Or was he a very good quarterback at all? Well, I think we know the answer. A year and a half in Denver, he's pretty good. Yeah, he is a very good quarterback. And the one thing that Mike Shanahan really liked about him, all the time that he was with Arizona on a bad football team, that guy never quit. And he always took it into the fourth quarter. The other thing about him is this is only his second year. So he's starting to get comfortable with this offense. And it looks like Ruben Jones is real comfortable with it. <laughs> Ruben Jones and Paul, you already mentioned it. If, if we have ever met someone who enjoyed life more than him, I can't remember it. I mean, this kid was smiling ear to ear from the second that he walked into the room and even meeting for, with us for 15 minutes couldn't take the smile off his face. Well, the one thing about him that you notice, too, about Ruben Drones and every excellent runner for the Denver Broncos, they make one cut and then they go. They make one cut and then they go. One cut. Raiders show blitz. They don't come and... Putzier makes the catch. The backup tight end gains 17, and they are throwing to him more and more. He's averaging almost 15 yards a catch. And this is where Jake Plummer has really started to fit into this offense. This is, again, Mike Shanahan and Gary Kubiak, the offensive coordinator, understanding his skills. See how he just takes those little steps? When you're moving around under these conditions, you want to keep your feet under you so you can throw accurately. There you saw him get out, challenge the corner, put the linebackers in a bind, and deliver the ball. Young man who used to pronounce his name Putzier has gone a little more Americanized with it now. And we'll probably pronounce it that way a little later. <laughs> Pick up of a couple. Let's check in with Susie. 
Well, Mike, Jake Plummer had expressed some concern at the start of the season about all the firepower they lost. Shannon Sharp, Ed McCaffrey, Clinton Portis. But the story of this season is how they have found success on the back of the guys who weren't expected to carry the load. You know, guys have really found their roles. Very unselfish play. And we meet with a lot of teams. But guys, I think you would agree, this may be the closest thing we found to that Patriot philosophy, that unselfish role-playing attitude. Everybody doing their part. And Susie, isn't it amazing when you find teams like that, they are the ones that are successful in this league. It goes far beyond talent. Drones dragging tacklings for about three. One of the reasons for that is uh, Mike Shanahan. He does what he can to investigate the character of the players he's going to try to sign. Not always an easy job. I mean, people want, you know, people want to come with you, may not always reveal everything about themselves. But on, on the whole, he's done a great job. And he talked about this particular football team having the most character of the ones that he's been around. Even all the way back to the 49er team in like 94, when he thought they were a very special group. Third down, call it five. Blitz coming. Plummer out in the flat. Drones makes one miss and can't avoid the other tacklers as Asamoa comes up from the corner, makes a solid stop, and Denver will have to kick it away. Now you're seeing what corners are supposed to do. I mean, and I believe that they, you, you play in the National Football League and play the, the position at corner, you've got to be able to tackle. And Champ Bailey is the classic example. That Champ is, we said it earlier, thought he might be the best corner. I think he's the best corner in football. But I'm impressed with the way the Raiders have come out and played in this game. They did the same thing against San Diego a week ago. They're finding their stride, I think, now. And they had a chance to win that game against San Diego. Mike Denor will kick to Philip Buchanan. And this is a team they absolutely despise. Buchanan. Was he run into by his own man? Yes. His own player hit him. And the Raiders catch a break. They finally catch a break. Look at this. Buchanan's waiting for the ball. All of a sudden, hits him, hits his right elbow. And now all of a sudden, it's a free ball again. It's bouncing around. Nope, Raiders got it. It's a good thing they had a sale on these earlier. We need them tonight. Over five inches of snow has fallen. More is expected. They are bundled up in Denver in a nothing-nothing game. What is behind the mask? The guy looks the same. I know. So it's, it's not, a, not mask. a mask. That's the guy. A, mask. a little red in the face. Coming this, out is, this is sort of neat, though, isn't it? Yeah, it oh, is. Yeah. For us, we're up here. Wheatley, the running back behind Kerry Collins. Two tight ends, and Tyrone Wheatley just gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. And you saw that graphic. The Raiders are the only team in the league not to score a touchdown in the first quarter. And I think that has to go with a lot of the changes that have taken place on the offensive side of the ball. And I think starting with last week's game, North Turner's football team, and we've seen it tonight, playing a lot more cohesive. Better job with the young offensive line. Better job by the defense getting comfortable with Rob Ryan over there. Well, you know, offensively, he's eventually going to get it done because he's always been one of the best play callers in football. Redman comes in. Ron Curry comes in as a third wide receiver as well. And Curry will get the ball on the crossing pattern and takes it out across the, let's see, 35 now, 21 yard game. Uh, last week, Ronald Curry was the GOAT because he drops a touchdown pass. Now, watch this. Boy, is that a perfect pass. And that ball was, was coming in hard. Lynch makes the tackle, but Curry, look, look at where this ball is thrown. Perfect. Hits him right in the hands, and that's concentration on the ball. <laughs> he had to catch that. I really do. Very athletic young man who was a two-sport star in high school and then again at North Carolina. End of the first quarter. Nothing, nothing from Denver. All right, who's the Sunday stud? How about Rudy Johnson of Cincinnati? Over 200 yards rushing. Julius Jones of Dallas on Thanksgiving, 150 rushing yards. How about Peyton Manning? Six touchdowns. <laughs> Willis McGahee, 116 rushing yards with Michael Vick, two passing touchdowns. Vote on ESPN.com or NFL.com. We'll give you the results in the fourth quarter. I might vote for Peyton, six touchdown passes. Here's Wheatley. 
You know John what? Lynch finally cut him down. We were sitting there talking two days ago to Champ Bailey, and Champ Bailey says, you know the one guy we really worry about more than anyone else? Well, that's Tyrone Wheatley, number 47. Look at the head of steam he's got. And you remember something. This guy three weeks ago had a separated shoulder. And we said, how are you feeling? And she shoulder's pretty good. But I have a high ankle sprain that's deep. <laughs> Roland Williams, number 86, the tight end, really made a terrific block to give him a chance to get up into the secondary. Now, you get up face-to-face -face with, uh, with DBs, not too many people want to jump in front of Tyrone Wheatley. Averaging five yards a shot so far. Now, Wheatley can still bring it. Dives this time, gets nothing. Kelly Herndon came in and got an ankle. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Mike, one thing that Raiders fans will be relieved to hear is that their record may be the same as last year, but not their attitude. Tyrone Wheatley told us that last year at this time, guys were just packing it in. They were ready to go home. This year, there's plenty of piss and vinegar at practice. These guys still want it. They're still passion. They're still fire. Hopefully, that'll stay alive. Last week's loss to San Diego was tough. Hopefully, another division loss will not totally take them out of it. All right, Sus, thanks very much. And what you may have heard in the background, apparently there was a uh, claim by Denver of a late fumble on that play. The officials sorted it out, and it is still a Raider football. Well, the reason they were questioning is when Tyrone Wheatley was tackled, the defender was underneath him, so he really wasn't on the ground yet when the ball came out. Well, they're dressed in all kind of outfits tonight, battling the elements. Collins, under pressure and throws too high for Gabriel. That's the thing Larry Coyer, the defensive coordinator, has to do. I don't believe that they're going to be able to generate enough of a pass rush with just their front four. They've got to bring linebackers from the outside. They've got to bring other guys to put pressure on them. That's Reggie Hayward, who's really come into his own in the last couple weeks. And Kanoi Kennedy coming from the safety spot. That's the extra guy. It will be third and ten for the Raiders spot the ball at the 46 yard line of the Denver Broncos. Denver calls a timeout. We'll take a timeout here at Invesco Field at mile high in a nothing nothing game. Welcome back to Denver, Colorado, out in this area today. NBC Sports Chairman and President Dick Ebersol survived the charter plane crash that killed at least two, NBC said in a statement this afternoon. Sheriff's officials said three survivors, including Ebersol, were seriously injured when the jet crashed through a fence on takeoff at a regional airport that serves the Telluride ski area. The network said the pilot and the co-pilot were killed. Rescuers were searching for at least one other person. Identities of other victims were not released, but Ebersol's wife, actress Susan St. James, was not listed on the plane. And certainly, our hearts go out to everyone involved in that. We hope that Dick Ebersol is going to be all right, as well as the rest of his family. That was John Lynch, John Lynch knocking that ball away for the incompletion. I tell you, I worked for Dick Eversall for a long time, Michael, and I tell you, one of the finest men I've met. And I, and I just wish him the best in his family. Absolutely. We're right with you there, Paul. Shane Luckler will come on to kick to Rod Smith. The veteran goes back to the 10. Very fortunate tonight. Not much win at all. And Smith comes up to make the fair catch around the 12 at the 13-yard line. 33-yard kick, no return. Still nothing, nothing from Denver. drop-off that time over the line of scrimmage to fullback Kyle Johnson for a couple. I want to show you Jake Plummer on our pass track. What you look at is the quarterback wants to be able to lead his receiver to a certain point. That's where the point's going to wind up. You see him get the ball up in the air over the linebackers. That ball has 11 feet of height, 24 yards down the field, and he led the receiver by eight yards. You've got to pick out the spot to where the receiver's going to go, not throw at him when you're moving. We got a we got a little stoppage here. I love the vapor trail. I love that pass yeah, that's track. Cool. I mean, a lot of people don't realize the different arcs and trajectories that you have to put on the ball at different places on the field. And they also don't realize the number of guys that can't do that. 
Here's Mike Carey. All of the open headsets are not working, so Denver must take off all of their headsets. Now you have to get into, well, there's two ways to communicate with your quarterback now. You can do it through a hand system from the sidelines, which is the old way before the headsets came in. Right. Or you can shuttle players in, which is the other way. Now, I don't know how much time the Denver Broncos have spent working on the communication systems by signaling in different hand signals from the sidelines. I think it limits now what you can do on offense if you do it that way. Wait a minute, he's got to get their headsets back on again. That was it. Now, here's the other thing. If it was just one of the headsets for the Raiders, let's say the offense went down, they still would consider it okay, and Denver could use both of theirs. That's the way it's set now, up. All of the headsets are operable. Second half. Cold, but operable. So ignore what I just said. And, Paul, you do it anyway, so that ought to be real easy. <laughs> I did. I was just going to say, that puts it in the quarterback's hands, and they kind of love it because they can call their own plays for a few down. I uh, know. They would never allow that. 12-25 and counting in the scoreless first half. Former had that one tipped at the line of scrimmage. And it was Sam Williams, the linebacker, who got a hand on it, number 54. You know, the one thing about Jake Plummer that it, when we talk to the Raiders about him, they know that, that Denver has an excellent running game with Ruben Drone. But the one thing about Jake Plummer that you have to, you have to be careful of, uh, I'm not comparing him to John Elway, but in a sense where he rolls out and he can get outside and throw the ball, Jake Plummer can throw left or right. It doesn't make any difference which way he's going. I he, think it, he can turn and, and wing it. I think he's the best throwing opposite where his hand is down the field. If he's right-handed, going left. Mike Shanahan said he was amazed at his arm strength doing that. This time he's under pressure and somehow got rid of it on the way down to avoid the sack. That gives you an idea how strong he is, too. And he takes great pride in not getting sacked because he feels like if he does, it's a slam against his offensive line. There you see him duck under. Now he starts to get the ball going forward. Before the knee hits the ground, the ball is out. He's good. only been sacked seven times. The franchise record is 22, and this is the 11th game of the season. Buchanan will go deep. Waited his own 43-yard line. Signal count for Micah Knorr. Pressure coming, gets it out of there. Buchanan says, get away. And it will die at the 43-yard line, a kick of 40 under trying conditions. The Raiders defense doing a heck of a job against an outstanding Bronco offense so far. Sunday night football at 8.30 Eastern. And hopefully it will be about 60 degrees warm. <laughs> Roethlisberger just having an incredible rookie season. He has won the first nine starts of his career. And the nine win ties a rookie record for a whole year by a rookie quarterback. Joe Ferguson with the Bills in 73. Chris Chandler with the Colts in 88. And, of course, we'll see him next week in Jacksonville. He's just he a has tough just guy. been incredible. He's just a tough guy. I mean, he is the perfect quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Makes plays with his legs. People bounce him around. Doesn't phase him a bit. Fits the image, doesn't he? Here's the screen. And J.R. Redmond can't get outside because of the speed of D.J. Williams. I'll tell you what, man. D.J. Williams, number 52, Watch him break up this screen. He's on the outside. They're trying to block him. He makes the tackle. But now Wilson is also there. When you try to run from these linebackers, you're not getting away. I'm sorry. No, you, can't. you can't go sideline to sideline against this defense. They just believe that D.J. Williams is working his way into the nickel, which he's on now. And this is the guy that they feel like has to be on the field all the time. Yeah, that was the assessment of no one less than John Lynch, who said this kid has a chance to be special. Collins against the three-man rush. Now under pressure and has to get rid of it. Excellent defensive job that time by Denver. 
What we are seeing tonight is an excellent defensive football game. Here's the defensive line. Now they come with a three-man rush, and they force Collins to the outside. This is, I believe me, this is Collins' fault. He goes to the outside, and he didn't have to. He could have stayed inside and thrown the ball. The coverage is absolutely perfect. Listen to you. Listen to me. Listen to you. It's Mr. about time you listen to Mr. me. Mr. Never been hit in the pocket. <laughs> I was in the pocket once. Yeah, no. Well, I took it out of your pocket. Anton Palafoy was the defensive lineman applying the pressure. Oh, man. Leckler, who always unloads at least one during a ball game will knock that one into the end zone. He bombed that one for 57, but the net will only be 37 yards. Maybe it'll be the first team that scores that wins. Don't go away. If you know anything about the history of these franchises, you know how much Mike Shanahan loves to beat the Oakland Raiders. He is 15 and four since he was fired by Al Davis and company. 15 and 4 is pretty good. And enjoyed every one of them. Yes, he did. Well, not the 4. Love the 15. And this has been a change of field position game ever since Denver fumbled because they have been out of field position. Started at their own 20, their own 13, and their own 20. And there is Warren Sepp, who doesn't look quite right in white and black after seeing him so many years in a Denver uniform. And he is pretty much a fish out of water at this point. A defensive end in a 3-4 scheme, scheme, rather, when for the rest of his career he was a tackle in a 4-3. And went straight up the field to wreak havoc in the backfield. Plummer short set to click out for a few. Let's go to Susie. Mike, the story of the night has been heavy snow, mile high. You think the advantage would be to the offense, but it's been all D. The Raiders finally finding their groove, allowing just 51 yards and forcing a fumble. Broncos as aggressive as ever, led by linebacker Al Wilson, packing a punch. No score. Advantage Mother Nature. <laughs> well, that's true, Sue. Hey, Sue. And what a shot by Al Wilson. That really got this crowd going. Third and short here for Denver, trying to keep the drive alive. Under 10 minutes to go, second quarter. The last catch to Ashley Lee. Plummer on a planned run, nowhere to go. Beautiful defensive job coming up from the corner was Charles Woodson and Sam Williams, the linebacker, strung it out. This was a called play, and they had everybody at the line of scrimmage, and they ran Jake to the outside. Look at this. Man, I'll tell you what, that is just great defense. Number 54, Sam Williams, and Charles Woodson, the corner. I said corners have to tackle. Woodson can tackle. We've got some good ones in this one. And the only job Woodson had on that play was to turn it back in. That's exactly what he did. Mike and Orta kicked to Philip Buchanan. Somebody looking for a break they can take advantage of. Buchanan makes the first man miss, looking for a block. 14-yard return after a punt of 41. Again, good field position for the Raiders. Sam Brandon with a special teams tackle for the Denver Broncos. San Diego having an outstanding year. They won again today to go 8-3, and 3-1 three, three and in the division. Denver would tie them again for first place. Those same two teams will meet next week, but Denver would have the edge because they would be 4-0 in the division. Marty Schottenheimer turned out to be a pretty good coach, didn't he? He's doing a heck of a job this year. Collins just tried to get rid of it. And a flag is down. Did he get out of the tackle box or did he get it back to the line of scrimmage? No, they got Fadafehi for shoving him. And that's what, you know, this is one of those things. Foul. Just take a look at what you're doing. You're back there. Here's the quarterback. He throws, and now he pushes him. I mean, it's not much, but the official is standing there. You can't. He's already thrown the ball. Get your hands off him. You already made the play. You forced him. You made a great defensive stand, and now you got to hit him. And it's, you don't agree? It, no, I do. It's part of the rules. I don't agree with the rule. I think 
you know, you ought to be able to touch a guy. The thing is, is that's the way the rule is. The defensive players have to understand that the officials are going to call it that way. It's up to the players to know the rules, not us. That's right, because you don't. Thank you. <laughs> Wheatley with a head of steam will pick up five. You saw Kenoy Kennedy, number 28, stick his head in there. We talked to John Lynch. John Lynch, when he was in Tampa, would do all the things that you see Kenoy Kennedy do here for the Denver Broncos. The difference is, down in Tampa, John Lynch didn't have anybody else to do it. Now Lynch is a true free safety and the quarterback of the secondary. And, and he likes this role. When he came here, he felt like this was some place that he could contribute and fit in. John's been hurt, played only 14, 15 plays. Last week, expects to play the entire game this week. Collins under pressure, we'll just get rid of this one. Kenoy Kennedy, again, the safety coming on the blitz. They had a safety coming on the blitz, but all he had to do is look and find Doug Jolly, number 88. He was wide open. He released in, on the outside. On the right, left-hand side of your screen, you're going to see Doug Jolly, who is, the, who is the tight end. Watch right here. He's wide open. But also, Collins is running for his life. And there's Champ Bailey. You, read, you see why he couldn't get the ball to Jerry Porter. They can just forget. I mean, just forget throwing the ball to Jerry Porter when Champ Bailey is on him because there's no place and no breathing room for him to get the ball in. Third down for the Raiders. Quick throw to the outside. That will be very close, maybe a half a yard away from first down. Ball comes loose. John Lynch picked it up, but Doug Gabriel was down before the ball came out. I think you're right back to that same situation where you have to go for it. Sure. I mean, I really do. I, I, How about kick a field goal? No. I elect to kick a field goal. You know Tough why? Conditions to kick one. You know why? Because the field goal <laughs> kicker's coming on the field. Well, you cheated. I, but if he wasn't on the field, I would go for it again. Okay, I, I, you know, field position is, is is all of it. If he does for some reason, he doesn't make this field goal. They get the ball back on about the 40-yard line. 40-yard line. Well, yeah. it's a 48-yard try by Sebastian Janikowski, who certainly has plenty of leg. Hold it. He sure did. It wasn't even close. So this will be the best field position Denver's had in a long time. Well, since the fumble, the Denver Broncos have had field position starting on their own 20, their 13, and their own 20. Now, the Raiders, because of missing that field goal, are getting the ball close to the 40-yard line. See, I really believe in a game like this that is, you, you own field position. Even if you don't make it here like you did in the last time, it's 10 or eight less yards uh, for the Broncos to have to their advantage. And I really believe that eight yards is huge when you're looking at this field in these conditions. Well, we're on the 50, so the ball's on the 38-yard line. First down, and that is a big advantage for Denver. See if they can capitalize. Back to the ground, Ruben Drones, nice hole this time, and Drones will pick up six. Ruben Drones is a kid we talked about earlier who grew up with virtually nothing and is just happy to have the opportunity to do anything. He really didn't believe he was that good a player in high school or junior college or even in Oregon when he played there for two years. But if something will tell you about Ruben Drones is when he got his letter jacket from the University of Oregon that must have meant the world to him because he never had anything like that. He gave it to a homeless woman instead of keeping it. That is the kind of human being that Ruben Drones is and why all of his teammates just love the guy. And Ruben Drones is not the big speedster and he's not going to break it every time he touches the football. But what he is going to do is this. That offensive line, they're blocking for him. Look at Ruben Drones. Again, yards after being hit. Watch this. You're going to try to hit him with his legs. Wrong. That's Charles Woodson, number 24. You're not going to block him down. Since the fifth week this year, he has averaged 136 yards a game rushing. That's the best in the NFL. This guy can really wear you down. Sapp slowed him up that time, and they make the tackle maybe for a yard loss. Let's check in with Susie. She has more on Ruben. Mike, Drone's career has been all about perseverance, and a couple of experiences really shaped the attitude. Back in high school, one of the toughest guys on the team suffered a blood clot. His career was over, and he told Ruben, run every play like it's your last. 
and he has ever since. The first time he realized he had true potential, the second year in junior college, he had fractured a thumb. He was out for four weeks. His team was losing. He told his coach, when I get back, we won't lose again. And you know what? They didn't. And he has continued to believe in himself ever since. Susie, I can't remember anybody that smiled and laughed more when we had a chance to meet with him for the first time. The kid just has a great joy of life in playing football. One other thing about him, in a game when he was at Oregon, they were playing UCLA, he broke his ankle, came back into the game. Well, here's some highlights on Ruben, on Ruben Drone. Just take a look at how hard it is to bring him down. Now, Ruben Drone, he says, I run downhill. I make one cut, and then I'm in the hole. That's just power. He is not gonna, he's not gonna dazzle you and run 80 yards for a touchdown, but he is gonna pick up. Beat you up for those 50. Oh, yeah, he is. Third and seven. Four-man rush. Plummer, wide open, the catch made by Darius Watts. Watts, the rookie out of Marshall, a second round draft choice, a gain of 19. Now sometimes Jake Plummer throws the ball and it's not the prettiest, tightest spiral, but it's effective. You don't get style points for completions. This was a huge completion on third down and Darius Watts, their second round pick. I mean, here's another guy out of Marshall, watch the play. Jake sets in the pocket, good job by the line, hangs it up, and there's the ISO. Excellent job, you see the footing problems. David Terrell just can't stay with him. Boy, that was a nice cut to get open. Now they'll go with Garrison Hurst, gonna give Ruben Drones a little break. And the veteran running back, 5'11", 215 out of Georgia who has actually won the NFL Comeback Player of the Year twice. Somebody, nobody, something that nobody wants to win even once. No, but you know, you, there's a guy, you know, you talk about guys coming into a ball game, Garrison Hurst, now here's the guy's been sitting down there for what, about an hour and a half? Yeah. Got him warm, and he comes back in, get into the game, and the first time he's in the ball game, they hand him the ball. But you're expected to make plays. Clock running, approaching three minutes. Good drive for the Broncos. Plummer gets it out to the fullback, Kyle Johnson, and he slides in Kyle Johnson, to about the 16-yard line. Kyle Johnson's a guy who was a fifth-round pick for Carolina in 2 and hung around, bounced around different places, like a lot of different guys on this team. When the opportunity came, when the running back situation continued to change here and Denver came back, that was his sixth reception, but he has two touchdowns. He has been very effective. Jake Drones Plummer comes back in, and Plummer looking up at the uh, clock. And looking at Mike Carey as if he wants to take a timeout when they get down to the 217 mark and does. They will have one left. The play clock was giving them a problem there. Well, they need as close to a sure thing as you can find on third and five here in a scoreless game. Usually you look for Rod Smith in a tough situation like this. He's the man in motion. They'll give it to Drones. Nice hole up the middle and Drones close to a first down. Maybe three quarters of a yard shy. Maybe you kick the field goal. It ain't no maybe. <laughs> well, they'll have a chance to talk it over because we have reached the two-minute warning here in Denver. And it's nothing, nothing. Raiders and Broncos. Now it's up to Mike Shanahan. This is Jason Elam. Just like the KGB, Mike. Wait a minute. That's right. Wait a minute. How, does, how does Chris Berman do two-minute drill with the uh, Cincinnati Cleveland game? It's going to be It'll real take up the whole fast. thing. Boomer will get it done. Elam for the lead. High snap. They get it down. And it is just good. There's credit to the holder. Mike, Mike Nord, Nord. What a wonderful job. The, the snap is high over his right shoulder. He manages to get it on the ground. And Jason Elam has so much trust in him that he just keeps coming. And Gnor, Gnor gets it down. Well, what a terrific job. I mean, holding is such a thankless lead. At high, right, under these conditions, get it down, almost down. He didn't get it down. But he managed to get it a little bit upright. What a kick by Elam. That thing was almost on his side. Joe, you're right. Mike Knorr 
got it up enough so that Elam actually had a chance to kick it, and he did. Both of them deserve a lot of credit. Yes, they do. And now the snow is really starting to come down. And who knows, three points might be enough. That's certainly what the Raiders thought when they tried to kick the field goal yes, sir. with Sebastian Janikowski earlier. Big Warren Sapp talking it over on the sideline, and there's Al Wilson, who inspired this crowd early with a wicked hit. Now, Warren had banged his shoulder early in that drive, trying to make a tackle, and uh, sort of hung it going to the sidelines. Doug Gabriel deep with J.R. Redmond. I go back to what Al Wilson said early. These guys look like they don't want to be here. They're from California. But they're playing like they want to be here. Redmond will take it. Gabriel blocking for him. Redmond breaks a couple of tackles and running hard. 33-yard return. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike Shanahan continues to be so impressed with the play of his quarterback. Jake Plummer does things that surprise you. He can roll right. He can roll left. But for a guy his size to have that much velocity on the ball, he has great awareness, and it continues to get better. A fierce competitor who plays for all the right reasons. The thing Shanahan loves the most, he's always there in the fourth quarter, never gives up, is always willing to sacrifice himself. He never cares about the stats, just tries to find a way to win, and we can look forward to that in the second half. And Susie, it's such a tremendous investment for a coach to get a new quarterback on his ball club. He's really mortgaging a couple of years in the future if it doesn't work out, and certainly the Brian Greasy deal did not work out for them here. I give Mike a lot of credit. When the greasy deal didn't work out, didn't stop him from going to find the right pieces he feels for his football team. And you have to feel happy for Jake Plummer. We did so many games when he played for the Cardinals. Collins under pressure. All he can do is get rid of it. There is a marker down. That's the fourth time he's thrown to the same place over on the Raider bench. Well, they've made more catches on the sideline than they have in the field of play. Illegal formation. Offense. Incomplete pass. Is accepted. Second out. Now the, now the field conditions are starting to make a difference. Now the snow is getting deep enough so that it gets clogged up inside your cleats. When you're out there, it gets packed up inside and you really get no traction. Still an advantage for the offense? It's gonna be tougher now as well. It's an advantage, no. I, I think it, no. I think it, it now starts to swing. When it starts snowing like this, it becomes tougher for the receivers to be able to cut. I still don't think you're gonna to get to Kerry or to Jake. It's gonna be a question of whether the receivers can stay on their feet. Third and eight with a minute 19 to go. Well, first of all, they marked off the penalty. Then they said that it was declined. So it will be third and seven. Well, they got second down on the field. And now they've switched it to third okay. on both markers. Yeah, second or third, it's somewhere around there. Denver showing a four-man rush. Collins hit just as he throws and knocked away incomplete. Very fortunate is Kelly Herndon because he never got his head around. He threw his arm out there and it just happened to hit the football. Well, I'll tell you what, this was about as close as you're going to get to pass interference. But I was really surprised at the throw. Take a look at it now. Downfield is Curry. Kelly Herndon. Now I'm going to tell you, that's a good play. When I looked at from up here, it looked like he got his arm around, but his arm never got in there until the ball came in. And then he hit the ball. Kelly Herndon has taken that cornerback position away from Lenny Walls, kept it, and doesn't look like he ever wants to get it back. Raiders will have to punt it away with a minute 13 to go. And this one had a little juice on it. The backspin takes it out to the 11th. A punt of 37 yards. 
and it will be a first down there for the Denver Broncos with 1.02 to go in the first half and Denver on top 3-0. Ruben Drone the 15 before he's shoved back. Now Wilson wired for Sunday night. Put these boys away early. Oh, me boy. Oh, me boy. Oh, me boy. Hell no. Oh. Yeah. I like Al Wilson. He's not a lot of woofing. He just goes out and does his job. Five tackles. You know the the great part about when they're wired is all the grunting. The grunting and groaning. The game is a, is a game is a game of grunts. <laughs> it is. It looks like a pack of dogs. <laughs> Joe, it sounds like Paul with lunch. <laughs> you notice that too, huh? If I don't like it. We ought to have Paul wired one day. At lunch, you're right. That'd be good. <laughs> I don't have lunch with you. <laughs> you have? No. It took, the, it took the Raiders a little while to get the attention of the officials to call timeout. Actually, they've got, an, they've got two left. This is, this is a critical series, I think, for the Broncos to try and at least pick up a first down. So you do, does Mike Shanahan take the chance of putting it in the air to try and pick up the first down, allowing the Raiders to save a timeout? Well... When you have Ruben Drones back there, you run it. Or you run a pass. Plummer. Deep. Bud Smith. Bud Smith will go all the way for the touchdown. I guess the answer is, yeah, you do throw it for 85 yards. And what a great throw by Jake Plummer. And you saw Rod Smith. Now, Rod may have been in this game for a number of years in his 10th year. He still ran away from Ray Buchanan. How's that for making your first catch of the night? 85 yeah. yards of the score. I'll tell you what it was really impressive about that whole thing is that Rod Smith took off and he went for the goal line. But that ball had so much air under it, and it was thrown so far that he was the only one that could get to it. That was a great pass. Yes, it was. You heard Susie talk just a little while ago about how Jake is able to throw in all kinds of ways with great strength and great accuracy. The point after. And what a turnaround. The Raiders trying to call timeouts to get the ball back, and Plummer burns them for 85. Well, Jake was trying, he was really looking short, and then he saw Rod Smith breaking downfield with Buchanan on him. It, this was really not the main target. Now, Rod Smith just, just holds Buchanan, and then takes off. Look at where that pass was thrown. That was absolutely perfect. Boy, look at him run, too. Jake's tickled with that one, and he should be. That's a that's a wonderful effort. And in Rod Smith's brilliant career, the longest catch of his 10 years, 85 yards for the man who holds all of the Denver records anyway. And I think that's what makes Mike Shanahan so special when it comes to play calling. You're in a situation there where a lot of coaches would take the conservative route, put the defense back on, field conditions, take everything into consideration. Mike Shanahan doesn't have any back off in the way he calls it. He and Gary Kubiak, his offensive coordinator, they want to take the big shots. Speaking of Gary Kubiak, uh, his son Clint was admitted to the hospital last night. And certainly our thoughts and prayers go out to Gary Kubiak and his family and his son Clint. We hope everything is going to be all right with him. You know, they had 25 plays before that one play. They gained a total of 110 yards, Denver, on that one play, 85. And boy, you're right. That was a, that was a nice call. Gabriel and Redmond are deep. Gabriel on the return. Makes a couple of nice moves, and Gabriel was one step away from breaking that baby all the way back. He gets 42 on the return. Willie Middlebrooks the tackle. Jake Plummer with an excellent play fake. Look at him get out of the pocket. Now watch him turn his hips. See him? Turns his shoulders and hips. What a throw. I mean, that ball is so perfectly thrown. Look at Little pump. 
Now, just gets those hips and shoulders turned, and it's effortless. Ray Buchanan tried to sit down on him, and Rod Smith makes the play. You see the effectiveness of Jake Plummer in and out of the pocket. Three for three out of the pocket, 111 yards, and one touchdown. That's where he is so dangerous. Kerry Collins trying to do something in the last few seconds of the half, and he unloads. John Lynch was the only one who could get within a step of it. Well, 29 Doug, seconds left. Doug Gabriel was double, double coverage, and he just actually stopped. And Collins just threw the ball, basically threw it away. Let me tell you what happened. You take Jerry Porter away from this Raider offense. Which they have. You've got Doug Gabriel in his second year. You've got Ronald Curry in his second year. You have two very inexperienced receivers trying to make up the difference. I think the Raiders have, are very young and will improve. But right now, you're dealing with youth. And you've got a veteran quarterback throwing to guys that sometimes are not where they're supposed to be. And J.R. Redmond will get a carry here. T.J. Williams makes the tackle with 23 seconds to go. The Raiders call a timeout, and they still have one left. Check in with Susie. What do you have? Well, Mike, I talked to Rod Smith before the game. He said he felt that the key to tonight's game was to score first, to get up on this Raider team. He said, because we have everything to play for, and basically they have nothing to play for. Take out their heart, demoralize them. That's the key. And especially, Susie, under conditions like this, it's just no fun to come out here and get whacked by somebody you don't like when you're miserably cold as well. See, last year I would have agreed with that with what Rod Smith said about taking the heart. I don't believe it about this Raider team. Last year's team quit. Under Bill Callahan, they just gave up and said, we don't want to play anymore, and they packed it in. Under North Turner, this is a different Raider philosophy. It's a younger team, and these guys are playing hard. They get a field goal here, you're right back in this thing. Oh, I agree with you, but it makes it so much more difficult for them. Oh, it sure does, does, but you got to understand something. What the Raiders have to do, they got a chance tonight I mean, if they didn't have incentive with San Diego winning, they got a chance to knock these guys out of first place. And they, that's incentive that, enough. Oh, well, sure, it's incentive enough. They had every chance to beat San Diego last week, be it not for a few drop balls here and there and a call that they're still trying to get an explanation. Well, you look back to the old AFL. You played in this division, and, I mean, people just, they despised each other forever. Well, yeah, you know, it was it was Denver and Oakland and San Diego and Kansas City, and it was just unbelievable. And it's no different. No. I mean, we were all friends like, the, you know, before the game, but never during. So it's third down in a yard. And you have plenty of time. There's 23 seconds remaining. you got enough for three plays minimum. Collins, double pop, touchdown. touchdown right down the middle to Joey Porter. Are you kidding? Now, what me, a comeback. Let me tell you something. There was double coverage on that play. Lynch was also over to try to help Champ Bailey, and this ball was thrown. The only one who could get this ball was Porter. This ball was thrown over his outside shoulder. He made a turn to get to this. Now, you see... Joe before that they took Jerry Porter out of this game, except on this play. Watch the movie makes back to the outside. That is a tough catch. Oh. He's catching this over his shoulder. Watch. Look at he this. goes inside, back to the outside. Look at this catch he makes. Champ Bailey just loses it. He knows he has inside help, and he just loses it. Jerry Porter with only his second touchdown catch of the year. I said Joey Porter, which would really shock the Steelers linebacker, but it was only Jerry Porter's second touchdown catch of the year. Two years ago, when Richie Gannon had his MVP season, he had nine touchdown grabs, and you're right. Champ Bailey just got lost on that one. Well, so much for taking the heart out of him. <laughs> you know, yeah. Rod Smith, got to think about this again. You know, you're not taking the heart out of this team. I agree with you. This is a different football team than a year ago, the, the, the Oakland Raiders. These guys, when they were talking to us last night, uh, Buchanan said to us last night, he says, you know, if you think this team is going to quit, you're crazy. We may not be getting in the playoffs, but See, we're going to take some people out of the playoffs. That's the other thing about Kerry Collins. Kerry Collins has had to learn how to throw deeper routes. People figure Kerry, big, strong guy, strong arm, should be able to throw corners, should be able to throw posts, should be able to throw the ball down. Never did a whole lot of it in New York. Now he comes here. North Turner says this is going to be a part of our offense. He has a learning curve. Let's go to Susie. 
Well, Mike, Jerry Porter is going to be a free agent at the end of this season. When we talked to him earlier on this year, you kind of got the sense. He's been patient for a long time, waiting to be the man, to have the opportunity. But through everything, maybe he was ready for a fresh start. And I talked to him tonight before the game. He has his head in the game. He wants to be a Raider. But I would still guess that somewhere down the line, he would like to try out those options. So pretty much a lot of this season is an audition for Jerry Porter, certainly Mick a show of it tonight. Susie, I watched him at West Virginia. He played mostly defense. He's about as tough as they come. And people are still talking about the hit he took last week from Randall Godfrey of the Chargers. Watch this from behind. Doesn't see it coming. Yikes. Yeah, but he got up. He got up. And he took another one later in the game as well. And he is a big wide receiver. I guess you don't go after Champ Bailey except maybe once a game or once a half. Well, I, I don't I don't even think it was a question of going after Champ. To me, that was just a great throw by Kerry Collins, putting it someplace where Jerry Porter can make a play on it. Now with 11 seconds to go, I'd be stunned if they try to do something. They'll just take it in and go to the locker room with the lead. We're in snowy Denver. A tremendous first half. Fireworks in the last two minutes. And it's 10-7 Broncos trying to win their eighth game against only three losses and stay even with the San Diego Chargers for first place in the AFC West. Let's go back to the field and Susie. Well, Mike, with conditions like this, what did you think the chances were that this would turn into a shootout? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you there. What do you think the chances were that this would turn into a shootout in conditions like this? A little different right there at the end. Two big plays. Both quarterbacks made some great throws. We just got to eliminate the mistakes and the turnovers right now in these conditions. Excellent. Our score here at Invesco Field at Mile High in Denver. The Broncos 10, the Raiders 7. Well, we packed all the action in about the last minute and a half of the first half of play. Jake Palmer with the bomb to Rod Smith that went 85 yards for a touchdown. That put Denver on top, 10-0. And then Kerry Collins came right back to Jerry Porter and hit him with a big touchdown pass to cut the lead to 10-7. If you only saw that, you saw virtually all of the big plays in the first half. Welcome back to snowy Denver, everybody. It is extremely cold, unhospitable conditions. But it's been an outstanding football game, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it, you know, these guys, when they're down there on the field, and it, it seems kind of stupid and sad, but they really don't feel it. When they're moving around, they're hitting people. They're not thinking about weather or anything else. They're worried about <laughs> that guy in front of me. Sure, Paulie. No, I agree with I do agree. And you know what? In the second half, the Raiders now, have they have a chance to do something. They wanted to beat San Diego and Denver. They know their season's going to end at the end of the year, but they wanted to be able to put some hurting on them. Like San Diego got away. They feel like Denver can be a possibility now. Again, field position is going to be so critical in this half. Janikowski, a line drive kick that will go out of the end zone. Rock Alexander can't get to it, and they'll start from the 20. Jake Plummer takes the field for the first time here in the third quarter. Threw the ball very, very well. Outside the pocket in particular. Completed three balls just when he's scrambling around for 111 yards in that first half. One of them being a big 85-yard bomb to Rod Smith. An 8 out of 10 overall. Ruben Drones, they try to establish the ground game again. He'll get one and no more. I was talking about Jake Plummer and the job he did out of the pocket moving around. You see him slide around. This is one of the toughest throws you can make as a quarterback. Sliding out to the left to hit Darius Watts. Then he hits the tight end across the middle. Little play action fake. Now a little pump. This was late in the half when he lays it out to Rod Smith. Again, talking about Jake Plummer. Three for three outside the pocket. That's where he put so much pressure on the defense. Two tight ends and hate goes in motion. And now here's Ruben Drone. Running over people, picks up 12 for the first down. He just crushed Charles Woods in the corner at the end of that run. Now, Charles Woodson gets up and moves his fist like I brought him down. Well, yeah, you did in a, in a way. 
Ruben Drones, watch this, folks. Bam! I mean, he hits Charles Woodson. Charles stayed with him. Number 24 is Charles Woodson coming in right here. He hits him right in the midsection, but Drones still gets three more yards after the hit. Again, that offensive line does so well, and you have to include the tight ends of Dwayne Carswell and Patrick Hayden when you talk about this offensive line, the way they block. Ruben Drones at least 110 yards. Loose ball. Raiders say they have it, and they do. Oh, what a shot by Marquez Anderson. He comes up and just levels Ruben Drones. The big the hit. strong safety knocks it loose, and the Raiders have the football. Oh, stops him dead what in the What a track. shot. And then Woodson made the recovery. Big break for the Raiders and the second fumble of the night for the Denver Broncos. Well, we've seen some big hits. Al Wilson on Tyrone Wheatley. Now this one, Marquez Anderson on Ruben Drones. That second time Drones has put the ball on the ground. Now, if, you, if there's any question about the dislike for these two teams, for each other, there's been some hitting in this ball game that proves that they really do hate each other. The Raiders had had only eight turnovers all year long. They have two tonight, both on fumble recoveries, and now the Broncos will have to burn a timeout on defense. I want to show you. No, check it. There was a ball on the field. Well, Charles Woodson picked up the ball, ran into the end zone, and didn't bring it back. He left it down there. So they had to go get it. Quick pass gets it to Gabriel, and Doug Gabriel is inside the 15-yard line. Kerry Collins completed that one, but I want to show you what he did on pass track. Watch the throw that he makes. That's Champ Bailey on the right. Jerry Porter's the receiver. Jerry Porter's highlighted. That's John Lynch on the inside. Watch the angle. He throws it up and over the other shoulder. Look at the arc he has. 46 yards the distance, 23 yards, and 28. What's so impressive about that is he let the ball go at 40, at 23 yards, and the perfect trajectory of the ball dropping down into Porter's hands, allowing him to make the play. Collins, line drive, throw, Porter. Touchdown. And just like that, the Raiders have the lead. Champ Bailey again. You know what? You know, a, a lot of people stay away from Champ Bailey. He had three interceptions going into this game, and that tied the whole team. But take a look at this throw. That, that ball was perfect. Here goes Porter to the inside. Look at his body. His body shields it away from Champ Bailey, where Champ doesn't have a chance. The only thing he could have done was knock it down. And you saw him come off the line of scrimmage and just give a slight move to the outside to keep Champ outside. Boy, he used that 6'2", 220-pound frame to shield the defender, and the extra point is no good. How blocked. big is that? Monsanto, Monsanto Pope manages to get his big mid on it. Number 75 manages to reach up and swat it away. It's the Denver Mint. If you take a tour, you do not get free samples. Oh, uh, really? No. When did they start that? Forever. Oh, okay. Champ Bailey shaking his head. Trying to figure out what happened in the last couple plays. Rock Alexander driven into the end zone. He will bring it out. Part of this game tonight was going to be Champ Bailey against Jerry Porter. In the early going, Champ Bailey had it his way. See him staying right in Porter's pocket. Wherever Jerry Porter went, he wanted to mirror him. And then all of a sudden, it's changed. Right at the end of the half, Jerry Porter with a great over-the-head catch. And now for the touchdown. Gets Champ outside, breaks it hard. Kerry Collins delivers the ball in a perfect spot. You know what, Jerry Porter... We have a penalty on the kickoff return, but Jerry Porter had only caught three balls tonight. Two of them for touchdowns. And before that, Champ, the one he did catch coming across the field, Champ Bailey let him go across the field. So he wasn't covering him then. But, you know, what do you say, well, everybody stays away from Champ Bailey. 
not if you want to win, but you know, I also talked about the field conditions change that because Champ is a great athlete with great closing speed and quickness. But now all of a sudden, you get on turf like this and snow like this, and he, he can't break on it as quick because the footing is not as sure. It's the great equalizer. And Porter is a very talented wide receiver. And big to boot. Denver forced back to its 10, first and 10. Plummer with time. This one's knocked away. Buchanan diving, got a hand on it. And the veteran they picked up from Atlanta in his 12th year made that play. You know, one guy we haven't talked about on this Denver offense is Ashley Lilly. And number, that's number 85. And here's a guy that's got to get himself in the game. Take a look at this. This, this. this play here by Buchanan, I mean, that's in front of the ball carrier. I don't know that that ball was going to be on target anyway. Well, and that's the responsibility of the coaches to get Ashley Lilly involved. I think Denver uh, wants to. I don't think Oakland's letting them. Nothing there. Maybe a yard. They faked an end around to Ashley Lilly on that last play. Nope. And usually when they do something like that, they're setting up something for later right. on. John Perella made that last tackle. And the reason why he's able to do it is Ted Washington, number 92, right in the big Ted Washington. You can't miss him. He just slides, and two people have to block him, and then it allows other guys to make plays, like Perella and Tyler Brayton. Sam Williams, all those guys getting a chance to make plays. Third and nine, the Broncos. Here comes the blitz. Smith, double team, got a fingertip on it, that's all. Now there's a flag down. Charles Woodson protesting, but there is a marker down. I, it may, I mean, it could go against Denver. Smith, the veteran. Illegal contact. Defense number 24. Five-yard penalty. Boy, I tell you, this is such a tough pen penalty now. Here's Charles Woodson here. The illegal contact. He stuck his arm out, but they actually both put their arms out. Look at here. Here's Charles Woodson. No, no, no. That's illegal contact. That's grabbing. That's a, that is. That's an excellent grabbing. call. That's an excellent call. It's officially grabbing the arm. Actually, it could have been pass interference because you take a look. Paul, I was just going to say, it easily could have been interference in a 40-yard penalty oh, yeah. instead of a 5-yard penalty. I don't think it was illegal contact. I believe it was pass interference, which would have been a much bigger game for the Denver Broncos. Well, the difference is, is once the ball is in the air, it's supposed to be called interference. Obviously, that ball was in the air when there was contact made, but a lot of times it's called that way. And it's a break for Denver one way or another because it's a first down. Drones running room this time. It picked up about eight. Check in with Susie. Well, Mike, this game was all defense until late in the first half when Jake Plummer unloaded 85 yards to the veteran Rod Smith, the longest touchdown of his 10-year career, and Jake was on fire. But the Raiders answered. Kerry Collins to Jerry Porter, the most veteran of the Raiders receiving core. Touchdowns number two and three on the season for Porter. And oh, by the way, he beat Champ Bailey. 13-10 Raiders. And Susie, they have been very impressive coming back after they got down 10 to nothing. Oh, you know, we were talking about getting Warren Sapp at tackle where he's out of position on the defensive end part of the field? Not that time. <laughs> no. He came out of line of scrimmage and just made an outstanding play. Well, along with Derek Brooks, he has the longest current streak of any defensive player selected to seven straight Pro Bowls. Probably he's going to end this year, but what a run he had. Third and a yard. Plummer, Carson, 
Maxwell can't hang on to it. The defense by Napoleon Harris, who got a hand stuck in there. And Jake just hung that one up in the air. Well, he had to. He had to get it over the defender when he came to the outside. You see, on the outside, Bobby Hamilton, number 98, was in his face. So Jake had to float the ball over. Carswell had a chance, but you can't wait on the ball either. you got to go get it. He also throws it back behind him a little bit. He wanted to throw that ball to Ruben Drones, but Drones went out and appeared to fall down on the slippery conditions. Micah Knorr will punt it away. Buchanan is all the way back to his 35. Short kick, he says, let it go, and it's touched by the Broncos up past the 40. Only a 27-yard kick, and great field position again for the Oakland Raiders. Good night for the veteran, Kerry Collins, who has labored with Carolina, the New York Giants, and now the Oakland Raiders getting the chance to play because Rich Gannon was hurt. And Collins, who came in with only seven touchdowns and 12 interceptions, has had two big scoring strikes tonight. Justin Fargus will get the carry hit in the backfield, and Fargus will lose a couple. You know, people think just because Kerry Collins is a 10-year veteran, he can go from team to team and just pick up as if nothing had happened. But he was faced with a tremendously different learning curve here in Oakland. The system was different. And, Joe, you know as well as anybody, when you get as few reps as he had uh, behind Rich Gannon, he really never had a chance to learn this system. Plus, when you're a veteran, you have a lot of baggage in your brain that you have to reprocess when a new system is instituted. And he told us the other night he is really just getting comfortable with it. Terminology is different. He's not going to be comfortable with that. Reggie Hayward. Now five and a half sacks on the year as he got him from behind. Well, I'll tell you what. There was no place to throw the football. Kerry Collins did what he had to do, and that was eat his football. If you take a look at Kerry Collins, he's looking downfield. There was really nobody to throw the ball to. And that was just great defense. He goes right around Roland Williams, the tight end trying to block him, and has it. That's the third straight game that Reggie Hayward has stepped up and had a sack in. Also had an interception last week. Third and 17 now. And be very conservative and give it off to J.R. Redmond, and he is buried. Ellis Johnson led the defensive charge, and they'll have to kick it away. Mike, this is one of those deals where coaches tell us all the time, there's nothing wrong with punting the ball away. The way the Raiders defense are playing, they're playing tonight, go ahead. Put them deep in their territory. You've got the best punter in the league kicking the ball right now. Plus, you're playing, a, you're playing the field position game. And the Raiders have had the advantage in that department for much of this night. There's Rod Smith, sixth in the NFL in punt returns, averaging nearly 12 yards a kick. Blackfoot drives him toward the near side, inside the five, and it almost tipped outside, was it? No, touchback. Oh, that was close. Just. David Terrell, the first man down, nearly saved it. Look how close that is. Well, I can't wait to do hoops. We don't want you to leave yet. Well, I won't leave, but I can't wait to do hoops. I'll tell you one thing. This Raider, I'll tell you a couple things. This Raider defense is playing inspired. After that touchdown pass, they came back, and they just aren't given any breathing room to this Denver Bronco running game. I think the ball's got us. I think the, the success for the Denver Broncos is going to have to fall on the shoulders of Jake Plummer. How many times do we hear defenses say, what, or kid, and head coaches, what do you have to do to win the ball game? Well, we have to stop the run, and we have to be able to run the ball. When you're talking about the Denver Broncos in any or any other team, you want to make them one-dimensional. And what they have done in this second half has made them one-dimensional. Bobby Hamilton, number 98, who came over from New England, has made a couple of plays here in the second half. Plummer on the run. This one is incomplete, intended for Patrick Hafe's tight end. Let's go to Susie. Mike, I think you guys will agree. It looks like this Raider defense has finally gelled. They fell into that trap that sometimes too much change is not a good thing. 
new coordinator, new scheme, a lot of new players, Zap, Washington, Ray Buchanan, and Ray told us that they were still trying to find their identity, that everyone thinks they get a lot of talent, bring them together. Maybe they were a little too ambitious with what they were trying to do on defense. It took a long time, but now they finally seem to be coming together. And he thought they were trying to cut back at just about the right time. Here comes a blitz against Plummer. They force him to throw it short and quickly. Ashley Lalee will make the catch, but Philip Buchanan was right there to wrap him up for a very short game. I'll tell you what, what, what blitzes do on third down, it makes the quarter or any down, it makes the quarterback, if you get one guy, just one guy free to get rid of the ball in a hurry. And when he has to get the ball in a hurry like Jake Plummer has to to the left, you look at the heat, it's got to be a quick pass. So there's no chance for the receiver to get the 10 yards he needs. That way Tyler Brayton, number 91, is able to come scot-free right into Jake's face. Buchanan waits at his own 34. And the Raiders stand a pretty good chance of getting good field position again. Another, bad Another very short kick. This one takes a Denver bounce inside the 40 with the roll, a kick of 37 yards. And that maligned Raiders defense, 27th in the NFL, is getting it done tonight. 6.27 to go, third quarter. Rod Smith trying to fire up the troops here in Denver. They're down 13-10 in a huge game for the Broncos. Justin Fargus hit in the backfield. Swarmed under for a loss of two. We talked about the Raider defense stepping it up a notch. Denver has done it as well. This, the first game these two teams played, it was a 31-3 game. Denver just totally dominated everywhere. Here you see DJ Williams again. You, show, you see his speed to get inside. How does Miami not win a national championship every year with people like <laughs> DJ Williams, Jonathan Vilma, Kellen Winslow, Jr.? I mean, they gosh, have a few, don't they? Jeez, they're great football players. Four-man rush, now they'll blow the play dead. Jerry Porter, number 84, took off too quickly. Ball start. Number 84. Gary Collins has made it difficult, even though he's only completed 50% of his passes. You look at the way he has spread the ball around. Under 15 yards, he's thrown 15 balls. Over, over 15 yards, he still has challenged everybody on the defensive secondary, including Champ Bailey, who plays that right side where Jerry Porter is. Well, here's the situation where he better try to pick up eight or nine. Pressure coming. Screen. Oh, Vargas. Loose ball. Broncos have it. Ray Lee Johnson. I'll tell you what, what a great play by the defensive end, number 99. He played this screen perfectly. They had a full-scale blitz on Kerry Collins, and the screen was up the middle. But watch number 99, Ray Lee Johnson, breaks through the wall and makes the tackle. Paul, he didn't break through the wall. Neither one, no one. Brad Badger, he decides Adam True, nobody blocks Ray Lee Johnson. They let him walk right through. This is a perfect call against a blitz like that. All they need to do is get a piece of him, and Fargus is still running. Do you have any idea how much better it sounded when I said he broke through the line <laughs> and, and nobody blocked him? I just got to add a little drama to it. You know what I mean? I like that. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> a little spice. Yeah. Huge break for the Broncos. Fake the drones, fake the end around. And now Plumber somehow got away. Throws. End zone intercepted. Picked off by Philip Buchanan. And he comes back the other way. <laughs> Holy cow, what a play. Now, this was a fake, I'm, I'm going to tell you, and he was going to throw the ball, the fake end around to Ashley Lee, and he was going to throw the ball to Ashley Lee. Then the pressure came. He ducks underneath it, then throws the interception. This is this is what the problem sometimes is with Jake Plummer. Just trying to do too much. Hold on to it, Jake. That's all. Back in Denver on an exchange of turnovers. 
the Raiders have the ball back at exactly the same spot that they gave it up. <laughs> really a bizarre play. After they get the ball on the fumble, Jake Plummer looked for all the world like he was sacked, got away. Then it looked like he was going to throw a touchdown pass. But Philip Buchanan had other ideas and picked it off. I'll tell you, did he come out of there in a hurry? Yes, he did. I mean, he was moving. Three turnovers tonight. They had only forced eight in the first ten games of the season. Three-man rush. Collins still under pressure. Throws to Fargus. And Fargus will pick up about six. I'm going to take you back to the interception. Right there is Ashley Lalee. He's going to come around on the reverse. What's going to happen is Rod Smith's going to go this way if the other guy coming yonder. What happens is Jake Plummer just tries to make too much. Okay, now you're trapped, Jake. You're trapped. All right, you got away. Now, don't try and make too big a play. Run into his left. He hangs it up in the air. Philip Buchanan does an excellent job of making But Look at how he ducks under, though. Well, so much of that was so good, and then the decision to make the throw was so bad. Excuse me. Can I ask you The other guy coming yonder? Yonder. <laughs> coming yonder from yonder What side. route is that? What's, that? what's that yonder route? It's a little bit of the New Jersey guy that went south. It's First an old down. New Jersey term. <laughs> when you move from New Jersey to Memphis, you say yonder. It's amazing to watch Jake Plummer and see how really strong the guy is. Yeah, and, well, and the Raiders just picked up a first down. And with him trying to make plays like that with his arm, it sometimes gets him in trouble. The game we did, the opener, Kansas City, coming out from his own goal line, switched the ball to his left hand, wound up throwing an interception. The Raiders have recaptured the, mo the momentum. They're out at their own 48-yard line. Collins against the blitz. Loose ball, now they're going to say it's incomplete. Porter got his hands on it, but Donnie Spragan was in there to take it away from him. I thought, you know, for, for a while there, that the Tyrell Whitley was out, he was hurt, but he made a great block. Take a look at this. Now, is this a catch? Is there control? No. You talk about Tyrell Wheatley, Paul, watch number 47 go out to the right. Look at him just stick right there. Bang. What good is that? Boy, that's a big block. That's no little guy he's hit. That's Marco Coleman he's taken to the ground. Second and ten for the Raiders. I think the Raiders want to challenge this. Because Jerry Porter, I believe, has Time control. Out. It's their first. Hey. 30 seconds. I would almost wonder, if you look at that, I think Jerry Porter has this ball. He tucks it in and winds up with his knee on the ground. Now, if they challenge this one, they're going to lose. We're in Denver, where the snow continues to fall and the temperature continues to drop. Let's go back to the last play. Now, Michael, you think that he doesn't have control after this. Not knee, at the end. His knee is on the ground. The ball comes out. It's an incomplete pass. You have to have control. I agree. See how easy it is. <laughs> You're mellowing. Piece of cake. Second and ten. Collins oh, underneath the Wheatley, and boy, you set up a guy oh. when you throw him a pass like that. And Kelly Herndon cut his legs out from under him, and Wheatley is hurt. That well, knee. I tell you, that's a good way to get a guy killed. I mean, I'm not kidding you. I mean, you don't ever set him up like this. Here's Tyrone Wheatley. He has no chance. Kelly Herndon is right on the ground and, and hits him shoulder right on the knee. And there's nothing wrong with the hit. It's just a clean play. Wheatley is in a tough position and gets whacked. We'll check on him when we come back. Imagine what's going through his mind now. It's been a season full of injuries for Tyrone Wheatley. He missed three games with a separated shoulder and since then has been playing with the pain of an interior high ankle sprain. We talked to him last night. You could tell as he walked out of the room, just about everything on his body hurt. A shame to see him leaving on a cart right now. Well, now he's got an addition to it, Suze, and that's a big loss for them. Now they've got Fargus, Zeroway, and Redmond along with the fullback, Zach Crockett. And they'll go with J.R. Redmond on third and ten. Collins.
Edwards with pressure in his face, throws it up for grabs. And it is incomplete. Now, you know what? That should be, that should be pass interference. Kerry Collins is in the pocket. Somebody just comes up and absolutely levels, absolutely levels Ronald Curry. I mean, that, that's... You're absolutely right. I think they were guessing maybe that ball was tipped. That's why he came out that way, and they took the opportunity there to is, get him. There is no way this is not pass interference. You cannot hit him. Look it. Ronald Curry is running for the ball, and he just gets knocked over. I guess my question is, what do they call pass interference in this league? That was Kanoi Kennedy, and I will guarantee you, Joe, he thought that ball was tipped and he was going to get a free shot, but it wasn't tipped. Well, what about the official? The official has to throw the flag and then check with the other officials to see if it has been tipped. We got an injured player down here in front of the uh, Bronco bench. Kelly and Herndon, Kelly 31, Herndon. and Champ Bailey went up together. Kelly Herndon, Champ Bailey, they meet in midair. And when Kelly Herndon came down, the ball comes out. He has the interception. Watch the two of them. They hit here. Kelly Herndon's going to come back down on his back. Right there. Jeez. And the ball comes out. He couldn't hold on to the football. But you're absolutely right, Joe. I mean, Kenoy Kennedy just labeled Gabriel coming across. I think it was or Ronald Curry. Curry. Or Curry. But you're right. How can that be a no call? He was just obliterated. Snow must have gotten the official's oh. eyes. Now they'll punt to Smith. Smith has to go to his knees to cover up the muff. He gets two yards on the return after a punt of 37. The level and intensity of this game has gone up a considerable yes, amount. Has. And there's a lot at stake here for the Denver Broncos. With the San Diego Chargers winning earlier today, they go, Denver goes to San Diego next week. And the way you look at these AFC teams, Mike, and you brought it up in the open, if you don't win this division, there's a real good chance you're not going to get into the postseason. There's just too many good teams in the AFC. Somebody who has a very deserving record is going to be left out. At least it looks that way. Now Jake Plummer's got to go to work on offense, and the Broncos will start in a very unfavorable field position again. They've been in this position most of the night, and Tyler Brayton makes the tackle on Ruben Drones. Let's take a look at those records in the AFC. The top records, of course, You've got Pittsburgh and New England right at the top at 10 and 1. San Diego, Indianapolis, and the Jets all 8 and 3. Denver trying to join them. And Baltimore at 7 and 4. You have three division champions. You've got the wild card. Somebody gets left out. And the only way to ensure you're not getting left out is to win your division. Plummer with good protection. Ashley Lalee makes the catch. This is a very talented wide receiver out of Hawaii. You don't think this is a strange condition for him to play football? Well, it's strange for him, but then also you take a look at Jake Plummer. Jake Plummer comes out of Arizona, plays in the desert, lives in the desert, plays a lot of pro ball, and you look at him out here in the snow, and you look at a kid, and you say, this guy looks like he's been living in this kind of weather all his life. Lalee finally came in and dedicated himself to the game this year after two years where he admitted he did the minimum. He cared about football when he came to work, when he came to practice, but he did not do anything extra. He did just what was required, and no matter how talented you are in this league, if you just do what is required, you're not going to get any better. No, no and he it. really, I'll tell you, Ashley Lee really had to work at it, and he was the first to admit that he just, you know, he figured his talents would just take over for him. But we found out with most guys that you talk to in the first and second year, that all of a sudden, everybody has more talent than you have. You better work on something. Or at least as much, or they're just as fast. Ray's done a good job against the run tonight. Plummer over the middle to the enormous tight end, Dwayne Carswell. The ball comes out late. Carswell, 290. 
I mean, defensive backs do not want to see Dwayne Carswell they, coming. They worked him at tackle during the uh, tr during training camp this year, and he's a big reason why they've been able to run the football so successfully because he is just another offensive lineman. They're going to let the clock run down and end the third quarter. It will be a second and seven. Check it now. They have moved the sticks. It will be third and a long one as they try to keep this drive alive. That's the end of the third quarter. The Raiders continue to lead 13-10. The Raiders came in here tonight hoping to stick it to the Denver Broncos, their longtime rival. They're doing it now, winning by three. One of the things that Mike Shanahan loved about Jake Plummer was even when he was on losing teams in the desert, when it got to the fourth quarter, you could see the fire burning in this guy. He wasn't trying to protect his stats, wasn't trying to protect himself, he's trying to win the ball game. He's one of the, he, well, not one, of, I was going to say one of the few quarterbacks that does it, but he's a guy that really doesn't care about stats. They're, they're not important. There's only one that is important to him, and that's winning a football game. And he talked about it. He said, you know, he left an awful lot of wins get away from him when he was in Arizona and he's here trying to make up for him blitz coming they do a good job of picking it up and he throws downfield the catch down to the three Ashley Lalee 56 yards well I said earlier that you're going to have to get Ashley Lalee back into this football game or get him in the football game there's also pass interference on this play and Ashley Lee ended up landing on the ball. Defense to the 25. First of all, this was pass interference. Now, Ashley Lee coming back up. Here comes a pass interference. That's Walker. And watch Ashley Lee. I mean, he's not put to the ground because he's hit there. Now he catches the ball. So Walker doesn't really touch him. So up he gets. And he gets the ball down to about the three-yard line. What? Denard Walker, though, Paulie, here's a guy who didn't quit. He didn't just stay on the ground. He got up and made the tackle. And Lalee didn't quit either, and Lalee is still down. Get his knee on the hard ground, I think. Gets a huge ovation, and that was a nice play coming out of the timeout. You know, you, <laughs> we, we saw Jake throw... Jake Plummer throw a pass before the half. Now it's snowing, it's cold. These guys have been out here a long time. And just think about the pass he just threw here again. He had Ashley Lee, he hit him perfectly. There was no chance for Walker to cover him. It's just a perfect pass. Jake looks so relaxed. I mean, he just, he just in total control of what's going on. You start talking about the quarterbacks who, who are Pro Bowl caliber quarterbacks in this conference. He's definitely one of those guys. Lalee now four catches, 80 yards. Ruben Drones. Bouncing off tacklers, touchdown. Ben Hamilton pulled from his left guard spot and gave him a block on the corner. I'll tell you what, when it, you get down there with Ruben Drones, and, and the thing about him that, that is so impressive, watch his feet, watch him move, he doesn't stop. He never stops moving. Here he comes to the outside. Look at this guy. His legs are always going. He just powers himself back to the outside for the touchdown. Denver regains the lead. Elam will try to make it four points. does. Keep in mind, these are not automatic tonight. Oakland already missed an extra point. It's hard to imagine, but it's getting colder in Denver. Hard to imagine. I'm freezing. Down to 17 degrees, not counting the wind, but what a ball game. We've had one big play after another. Once we got inside the two-minute warning of the first half, things really exploded. Redmond on the return for the Raiders. We talked about Jake Plummer 
impressing Mike Shanahan by his ability to make things happen in the fourth quarter. It's one of the reasons he brought him in here. Well, we're in the fourth quarter. This is the bomb to Ashley Lalee that got the ball down to the three-yard line. And then it was Ruben Drones following his blocking and using his power to give the Denver Broncos the lead. Isn't it amazing? Ruben Drones, the first four games of this year, he played fullback. He had a total of 30 yards rushing in four games. And then he went nuts. Now he's moving on to 1,000. Now the ball back in Kerry Collins' court. Collins out in the flat. Redmond. A yard. Al Remember, Wilson. Wheatley is gone with a hamstring injury. But here's a game, really, I mean, we saw we saw three really big bombs in this ballgame. But this is a game, you're inside 14 minutes in the fourth quarter, that you don't get greedy, Joe. You just do what you need to do to move the chain. I think you take the shots you have to. I mean, that's you don't change your personality. And the Raiders have been guys this the, tonight that want to go down the field. Collins has this blocked and intercepted. Blocked at the line and picked off Ellis Johnson. Touchdown, the 288-pound veteran. You know what? He may be 288, but that guy's got some speed. Well, Ellis you see him run. take off? You get these big guys, get the ball in their hand, they become track stars. They think they are. They think they're wide receivers or running backs. And this ball is going to be tipped right here at the line of scrimmage. Now watch this when he catches the ball. Look at the speed to the outside. Monsanto Polk, the same guy that blocked the extra point, got this one up in the air as well. It looked like Ellis was being chased by a wide receiver, and they weren't going to catch him. Elam for the point after a 32-yard interception return by the 10-year veteran who they picked up in a trade from Atlanta. And what a turnaround in this game, 24-13. Exactly one minute ago on the clock, the Raiders led 13 to 10. In that minute, Two touchdowns by the Denver Broncos. I'll tell you what's great. All the players come up, and Ellis Johnson sits on the bench and takes their congratulation. Mike Shanahan walks up. He gets up off the bench to hug the coach. <laughs> Smart guy. Duck Gabriel on the return, trying to get to the outside, and can't. Taken down at the 30. Monsanto Pope, same guy that blocked the extra point. Earlier in the game, there he is, right there with Ellis Johnson, the two guys in the middle. He had to rush up outside. Now he just gets his hand up, and you hear the sound of the ball. Terrific job by Ellis Johnson, just locating it. It falls in his hands, and then you see him sort of pull away from Ronald Curry, the wide receiver. And Kerry Collins says, we've got it going. We're still in this thing. And all of a sudden, you get snake bit like that. They're down by 11. Plenty of time to go, though. Justin Fargus for running back. Blitz coming. And bobbled and incomplete intended for Teo Johnson. And Donnie Sprague in the linebacker had the coverage. You know, we've been talking all, we talked to be in the first half about the Denver Bronco linebackers and the great speed that they have. When you have linebackers, I tell you what, anything you're throwing short within five yards, you're going to have a linebacker covering somebody. Al Wilson's gone sideline to sideline. Donnie Spragan, D.J. Williams, all of them can run, Paul. Second and ten. J.R. Redman, the running back. Collins back to throw out in the flat. Curry will make the catch, knocked out of bounds. Well, what they did is they put Jerry Porter on the top side, and they knew Champ Bailey's going to be out there with him. So they put two receivers back on this bottom side, and they just ran quick outs, not quick outs, but like an eight-yard out, and it opened it wide. wide. 
if Jerry Porter is going to take Chan Bailey out of the game, it, now, you know, it's hard to say it because Jerry Porter's already caught two touchdown passes on Chan Bailey. But basically, Chan Bailey, if you get him away from the rest of the, this offense, you can, you can do some things. They've been picking their spots. This is a third and a short. And they don't have Wheatley in there, that 245-pound tailback. But they also went three games without him also. So it's, it's not like this offense hasn't had to adjust without Tyrone Wheatley. They've got Zach Crockett in there as a blocking back for Justin Fargus. Collins with a fake. And again, it's Porter. Perfect throw by Kerry Collins. What a great call. <laughs> Jimmy Ray, the offensive coordinator. I mean, and North Turner. Both, both sides of the ball, the offensive coaches are calling gutsy plays. Third down in shorts, third down in longs. They just take off and go. Champ Bailey and Kenoit Kennedy. That time again. Good play fake. Steps up. Terrific job by Zach Crockett. Keeping Al Wilson outside. Look at this throw. Look at this catch. Four catches, 122 yards for Porter, and that one came in like a rainbow. First and goal from the nine. Collins out in the flat to Curry. At the five, shakes a tackler down near the three. And Champ Bailey slow to get up. I think he's just angry. I do. I, re I don't think he... He's not, he's not tired, he's just angry. He really is. Here it is, you got Champ Bailey on Porter. Look at him, he's just down the middle. He splits the two defensive backs, Kanoi Kennedy and Champ Bailey, and the, and the ball is perfectly thrown. You can, I don't care what kind of a defender you are, you're not gonna defend against that pass. Second and goal. Complete jolly got a hand on it couldn't hold it. It will be third down This would have been one of the all-time great catches if he holds on to this He tries to snatch this thing out of the air one hand. Kerry Collins throws a rocket watch this reaches over behind the back Just got away from him and Kelly Herndon was make was there to make sure he didn't catch it And Kelly Herndon was there to discourage him from catching in the first place Third and goal. For Gabriel, and knocked away in and a play by Willie Middlebrooks, and a flag. What they're saying is that Willie Middlebrooks got his arm on the receiver. On D Doug Gabriel, they said he had his arm on him, when he went up to, to knock the ball down. Well, he, well, he did. He also, did. He also grabbed him around the neck. Well, he had his arm, you know, had his arm on his shoulder. Look at his left arm. <laughs> now he's got him around the neck. That's pass interference. That would qualify. I would think so. And that gives them first down on the one. Kerry Collins knows it's pass interference. A new set of downs for the Raiders. Now is where you miss a Tyrone Wheatley. No, you don't. Maybe, maybe you give it to Zach Crockett. Zach's carried the ball four times. Maybe this is his fifth. A couple of years ago, Zach Crockett had eight touchdowns on only 40 carries. He was the short yardage guy. Loose ball, and Collins will cover up at the 12. He was going to hand that ball to Fargus, and I don't think Kerry Collins ever had a grip on it. No, he didn't. The ball just came out, and Kerry Collins, you talk about, Fargus is, is number 20. Look at here. He goes to hand it to him. The ball slips out of his hand. But what he does is really smart. Nothing stupid. Just falls on the ball. You still have time. You have three more downs. Look at this. That ball is flying out. Now but we, he goes down and gets it. We see a lot of guys wear gloves in weather condition like this. I never liked it. Kerry Collins doesn't like it. He wants to be able to feel the ball. Well, they didn't have gloves that small when you were playing. <laughs> well, he's going to have to feel the ball from the 12-yard line now. 
and they'll whistle this play dead. Did they come across early or were they drawn? They were drawn. So they go from first and goal at the one. They'll move it back to the 17. Robert Gallery winds up moving a little too quick. And Jake Grove, both the rookies got out a little bit quick. You see number 76 on the right side. Well, Grove moved first. 64. Now Grove, they project as a center, has come and filled the right guard position when Ron Stone got hurt. The Raiders going the wrong way. Collins, John Lynch intercepts at the goal line. John Lynch, the player they picked up from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who was an all-star in Florida for so many years, comes out to the snows of Denver and makes a huge play here. Huge play by the Denver defense as the Broncos were on the verge of giving up a touchdown that would make this a very close game again. That's a classic case of a young receiver not finishing the route and Kerry Collins throwing to an area. Well, you know Kerry Collins is not going to throw the ball directly to John Lynch. He was obviously waiting for somebody to come across there. Nobody did, and Lynch was the beneficiary. Now to the end zone, Drones. Room to run. Ruben Drones for 18 yards. Michael, I want to take you back to what happened with Kerry Collins. On the left part of your screen, that's Doug Gabriel. He's supposed to fill in. That's where Kerry Collins is throwing the ball. That's where Gabriel's supposed to wind up. For some reason, he just stops. He'd have caught that ball right in front of John Lynch. Instead, he goes back the other way. And for some unbeknown reason, he just didn't continue the route. Well, you touched on it earlier. These are young, wide receivers who are not always where Kerry Collins is going to expect them to be. Well, there was also a penalty on the Ruben Drones run that moves the ball back to the one-yard line. And that would have taken him over 100 yards tonight. He came in five of the six games as a feature back with over 100. Now get back to work and try to get it again. And Ruben Drones fights his way out near the seven. Don't you love what Denver just did? They ran a play with Ruben Drones to the uh, off tackle, right? He picked up 18 yards, they had a penalty. So what did they do? They came back with the exact same play again. Well, they only have two plays. They and really here do. Goes, here goes Drones back, he sees his block, he goes back to the inside, and he picks up five yards. They have two plays. They have one called wide zone, where the guy aims at the tackle, the other one called tight zone. They run them left and right. One thing, the reason why Ruben Drones has gotten so many 100 yards rushing, and you always talk about this offensive line, it's one of the three offensive lines in the National Football League that has been together the entire year. And these guys, exceptional working together. They use a zone blocking scheme that most teams don't use. They work together. This is the smallest offensive line in the league. And they're just more athletic than a lot of people. And this is a huge down for the Oakland Raider defense because if they don't stop them here and they can run six more minutes off the clock, you're looking at, you know Oakland has to get two possessions to have a chance to even get close. So this is it. I mean, this is basically the ball game for the Raiders defensively if they can't stop them. Well, they threw third the, and five. If they threw the ball coming out in the end of the first half. You know they got to be worried about him throwing the ball again. Carswell backs up. The work as a blocker. Smith can't hold it. And good defense by Charles Woodson, who got out here from the corner. Charles Woodson on Rod Smith. And Rod Smith is complaining that Charles Woodson grabbed him. Here goes Woodson. You're allowed to check within five yards. And then he's back out. That was just excellent coverage. The ball was to the outside. It would have been a great catch, one-handed. That's a good And, and here's of the officials. Most of the night have done an excellent job, I think, letting the guys play. Micah Nord, a punt to the dangerous Philip Buchanan. No oh, pressure on Norm, and he shanks it to the near side. Very fortunate to get a bounce forward. 
and they will mark it at the 41 yard line so great field position for the Raiders after a 34 yard punt exactly eight minutes to go from snowy Denver and the Broncos with an 11 point lead the Raiders need two scores and they're running out of time Collins forced to step up. Nice throw to Gabriel. Gabriel throws one defender away. That was Champ Bailey. And then is taken out of bounds. I like 21 that. 21 yards. I like that. Here's a kid that doesn't make a play the last time they had the ball. It was supposed to come in. Now he's mad. He's angry. He's going to make up for it. Kerry Collins, nice job sliding in the pocket. There you see the footing, how tough it is to be able to get out and make cuts. If you're a defensive back, you almost have to wait. And there you see Champ Bailey just get thrown aside. Some big wide receivers on this team. Collins out in the flat again. This time Porter in front of Champ Bailey knocked out of the 13. The fourth quarter has been huge for the Denver Broncos. First, Jake Plummer going to Ashley Lalee. He takes it down to the three, and then Ruben Drones finishes it off for the touchdown. Then it was the Denver defense. The tip, the interception by Ellis Johnson, the 32-yard touchdown return, and then John Lynch picks it off at the goal line. And here they are, the Raiders back in their territory they again. Just keep coming, Paul. Curry. You know, they stopped at the six. Excuse me, these guys may be young receivers, but I'll tell you right now, when they get their hands on the ball, they know what to do with it. They get that thing upfield. They take as many yards as they possibly can get. And that was one of the things that Larry Coyer, the defensive coordinator of the Denver Broncos, concerned himself. When I talked to him on Friday, he said one of the biggest things I'm worried about is the size of those receivers you mentioned, Paul. They know that they can pick up extra yardage. All they got to do is make the move. And they're as athletic as anybody in the league. Redmond goes in motion. Collins to the back of the end zone. Curry, touchdown. What an unbelievable play. We <laughs> talked about the athletic ability. This is, this is as good a catch as you'll ever see. This reminds me of a Marvin Harrison catch. Remember the one-hander we had? Yes, sir. This is just like it. Watch this play. Reach up. One hand. Catch it. Look oh. at that. Look at that. Now gain possession and control and come down and hold on. And now they're going to go for two. But I'll tell you something about Ronald Curry. When he was in high school in the Virginia Beach area of Virginia, he was the national player of the year as a quarterback in high school football, and he was the national player of the year as the point guard on the basketball team. If he'd have played something else, he might have been the national player of the year in that too. And now Collins will have to use the timeout, and that is huge because they're gonna need those. That kills you when you have to burn a timeout on a two-minute play. And that's their second timeout. They have one and a two-minute warning. Well, I'll tell you one thing. When you take a look at this catch, look at the uh, he does have gloves on. And watch him just, it just pulls it down. The total concentration to be able to hold on to the ball, get hit, and keep it when you hit out of bounds. Said he has gloves on. I don't care if he's got a first baseman Smith. <laughs> and That's Al Wilson's trying to catch. take his head off. <laughs> That's right, no, Mike. But he, let's go to Susie. Mike, I asked Curry if being a quarterback in high school and college made him a better wide receiver and he said only in the sense that when he was drafted he was drafted as a quarterback so he sat in meetings with the quarterbacks and learned firsthand what they expected from the wide receivers but this truly has been a breakout season for him as he reinvented himself this is the first time in his football career that he's been able to concentrate on just one position wide receiver you can see what he can do with it Susie, when he was younger, he was just so much faster than anybody else. People couldn't compete with him in anything. And now because they missed an earlier extra point, they're going to go for two to cut it to a three-point game. Collins with the fade and Champ Bailey, the only one close to it. 
and that means the Raiders are going to need a touchdown. You always wonder when they call a timeout and then you come out with a play like that and you got J.R. Redmond in the same area as Jerry Porter and three Denver Broncos, why you wasted the timeout? Well, what was odd is when they started that play, it looked like everybody they had was to the near side. Kerry Collins had no option whatsoever except to throw it there. I mean, that Kerry Collins is saying, what's going on? You know, the thing about it is you're talking about Curry. Here's a guy. He makes a catch like he just made there in the end zone for a touchdown. And last week he drops the winning touchdown. In the end, yeah. And it was wide open. Well, this game emotionally means a lot to both teams because they truly dislike each other. But it means a lot more to Denver because they need the win to tie the San Diego Chargers for first place in the AFC West, and they play at San Diego next week. And it puts them 4-0 in their division. Right. That's the most important thing. You look at the division. You win your division, you're in the playoffs. They've already beaten San Diego soundly here earlier in the year. But San Diego's playing pretty good football. We saw that today. Drew Brees continues to just play well. Antonio Gates, what a show he put on. Now kick it away with over six minutes to go. Rock Alexander on the run and then comes to a halt as he crossed the 25. Let's go to Chris Berman. Boomer. Michael, thank you. The Steelers just keep on trucking, and the bunch just keeps on rolling. Another 100-yard game, four in a row for him. Nine straight wins Pittsburgh. They win at home over Washington, 16-7. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Chris. You have to hand it to that Redskins defense. They have had no help all year long. They've just played their heart out. Well, you forgot. they forgot to tell Jerome Bettis that he's a backup. <laughs> yeah, they did. Well, what a job he has done. Here's a guy. I'm telling you. All those touchdowns used in a spot, they said a spot roll. Yeah, a spot, like seven games. Yeah, the bus has had an overhaul, and he's just fine. Drones. Huge drive here for Denver. They would love to take some time off the clock. Drones. I'll tell you the other thing I'm going to back. That was a shot by Marcus Anderson. Wait a minute. Marcus Anderson oh, hit him, and I'm going to tell you something. And Drone still picks up. He st well, Drone still picks up two or three yards on this play. Now, this is. Ruben Drones just hit 100 yards. Six of the seven games in which he has started as the featured running back. He's gone over 100. He has been a workhorse and unbelievably productive. Look at that shot by Anderson, <laughs> and he still goes forward. Third and a long yard. Hit in the backfield, then oh. hit again. He did not make it, and the Raiders defense comes up huge. Anderson led the charge again. Oh, I'll tell you, and Ray Buchanan, number 34, what a job he does on this play. I'm going to tell you something. Drones just gets wrapped up by three guys. Watch it. Boom, boom. And that's Buchanan, the guy that makes the stick on the bottom. Danny, Danny Clark comes in, too, number 55. He just blows up Kyle Johnson, the fullback. I mean, that's unbelievable. Th this defense has not quit. And you talk about they were in disarray at the beginning of this season. Not anymore. And Ruben may have lost his 100 yards. Rob Ryan's the defensive coordinator of this unit. He's got them figured out, filling gaps now. So the Raiders will get it back with plenty of time. Not a good kick. Buchanan trying to find room to run. Retreats and lost yardage. Mike Leach with a tremendous job downfield. Pins a loss of six on the return on Look at this. Watch number 83 come into your picture now and just go for his foot. Look at that arm sweep. Great play. Oh, man. Maybe Buchanan trying to do too much. And now he has them in a hole. Kerry Collins, fourth quarter drives or overtime to win. 22 times in his 10-year career with Carolina, the New York Giants, and now the Raiders. 
and he has time to do it. 3.37 on the fourth quarter clock. Underneath, Fargus, and Fargus is upended again by Herndon. Boy, has Herndon had some shots on people. Keep in mind, the Raiders have one timeout left and the two-minute warning, so they will be able to stop the clock twice. And the safeties in the corners in this game have just delivered incredible blows. There's Kelly Herndon just whacking away at just at Justin Fargus. You're, you're, you're seeing a classic example that where corners have to play, and I mean, they have to tackle. Yeah, he was going so fast his feet couldn't catch he up to him. He tripped up himself. <laughs> he, his feet were moving so fast that he couldn't keep it up. 64 yards. How did he get that wide open? Well, they're trying to play a soft zone. Look at the middle. Now watch what happens. He tries to cut back from John Lynch. Now he's running, and he just falls. <laughs> he's going, his, his body couldn't keep up with his feet. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, you talk about the throw, the catch, and everything. This offensive line has done a terrific job in this game. Ball they have. It's first and goal just inside the 10. Collins throws it away. Reggie Hayward applying the pressure. Collins had to unload. It will be second and goal. They have the ball at probably the most disadvantaged place on the field you could have it just inside the 10 they can't get a first down they have to get a touchdown but i'll tell you you can't say enough about the offensive line of the open raiders what they've done because the big plays that that terry collins has made is from sitting in the pocket and having the time to throw the ball collins over the middle down to the five on a completion that will take us to the two-minute warning as Zeroway caught it out of the backfield. Donnie Spragan made the tackle. The game hanging in the balance with two minutes left. Two minutes to go. Second and goal for the Oakland Raiders. They're down by five. Here's what the quarterbacks have done tonight. Both have performed very, very well under difficult conditions at best. Throws Zeroy. Oh, and he had Amos Zeroy headed for the corner, right for the pylon. And he had to throw this thing flat footed because he was looking everywhere but to Zeroy. And then he sees Zeroy at the last second. He throws it flat footed. He can't get it to come down. And the ball just goes this up. This is the game. The Denver Broncos are just not going to allow Kerry Collins to throw the ball in the middle of the football field. Fourth and Pope. goal from the five. Touchdown, Porter. Great job by that offensive line. You talked about it, Paul. That was the key on that play. Take a look. When you take a look at this, he has all day to throw the football. And I'm going to tell you something. Porter wasn't his primary target. He waited and he waited and waited. And Porter got himself open in the end zone. And Kerry Collins just sat there and then threw it. They're going to go for two. Right this now, they're up by one. This would make it a three-point game. Look at the time he's got. He's got all day, and you can't cover anybody that long. Here goes Porter. Champ Bailey is letting him go into the inside. Look at him. He's just sitting there waiting, 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 and hit him right in the gut. He could have hit him in any number of holes. Six catches, 135 yards, and three touchdowns for Jerry Porter, who only had one coming into the game. Collins. On the two-point conversion, no. There's a flag down in the end zone. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody threw Doug Jolly out of the end zone. <laughs> they ran him out of the end zone. He's just getting back Not in now. Right. Offense number 88 with the climb. <laughs> no good try. 
They called it on, on, on Doug Jolly, number 88. Didn't he get thrown out? Didn't you say he was the one who was thrown out? He was almost the down wall. to the tunnel. <laughs> I don't know how he got there, and then they called it on him. Well, I'll tell you Ooh. what. Oh, Jake the Snake. How many fourth quarter comebacks has he got? Look at Jerry Well, Porter's the number's on Porter. 135 yards and three scores. And the big part about the two-point conversion is that a field goal now, instead of tying it and sending it into overtime, would win the ball game. And we saw some of Jake the Snake's heroics out in the desert. We saw him succeed. We saw him fail. All right. And here's the thing with Denver, just one quickly. They yes. have three timeouts. Yes. Where the Raiders only had one, and they never even used the one that they had. But there are three timeouts left for the Denver Broncos. See, I think that the, the decision that Rob Ryan, the defensive coordinator, has to make for the Oakland Raiders is do you, get, do you play a soft zone or do you keep the pressure on that you have? I think you have to keep the pressure on and let your corners and let your safeties play the way they've been playing. I agree. I mean, you've come this far. You see eight minutes like this. Go for it. You go saw, after it. You saw what happened when Denver backed off. And Denver will have pretty decent field position to start what could be the winning drive. Let's go to Susie. Mike, the matchup of the game has been Champ Bailey on Jerry Porter. We thought offense would win out, and it has. Champ thought he'd get the best of them, but he did admit to us the other day that Porter is so big, but yet deceiving a lot quicker than you think he would be. And talking to Jerry before the game, he even said, hard to say who would have the advantage of this game, but just execute well, stick with it. Six catches, 135 yards, and three touchdowns. Talk about auditioning for free agency, man. And Susie, now it is the Denver receivers that have to make the big plays. They start from the 32. Three-man rush. Plummer. Look at Jake go, and he slides in near midfield. You don't have to be in a hurry, Jake. If you're going to have to be in a hurry, take a timeout. It's a gain of 16. Plenty of time on the clock, and all of their timeouts left. Three-man rush again underneath to Smith. Smith has a first down and more. Now, they have to be careful that they don't they don't get down there too quick. They took a timeout, the Denver Broncos did. Plummer, in a rather brief eight-year career, has had 24 game-winning drives in the fourth quarter, the most of any quarterback since 1997. And boy, that was a nice play to Rod Smith, and he ran well to get that first down. Keep in mind, Jason Elam, one of the best overall kickers and one of the best long-range kickers ever in pro football. Plus, the problem, you, the problem you have with Jake is containing the run. Now, if he can get into position, Jason Elam can kick it 55 yards. Now, this is in pregame, and the conditions actually are a little bit better right now than they were before. Sometimes it's tough to tell where they are right now, about the 37-yard line. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, yeah. I haven't figured out where they've been. It's a numberless field. Just got lines on it. Well, sometimes they get rid of a, a little patch of snow that reveals a number somewhere. Look, looks a little bit like that game they used to play called hockey many yeah. years ago. Drones will go in motion. Here comes the blitz. Plummer unloads. Triandis Luke, a rookie wide receiver out of Alabama. Well, that time the Raiders did come with a blitz. Charles Woodson came, and they sent a linebacker, but they never got close to Jake. Another blitz. Plummer throws underneath, and that's knocked away from the tight end Putzier and stops the clock with 45 seconds to go. That was Ray Buchanan. And that time, the Raiders loaded up in the middle of the line, and on they just sent about seven people. 
And that's what I would do. I'd keep doing it. I don't know why. You, you said it before. Why they let them go down the middle of the field with a three-man rush, I'll never know. Well, Jake makes a nice run on the one, but I don't think you can just allow him to sit back there and allow the receivers to run free. You've got to come with pressure. They're at the Oakland 26-yard line. Drones gets to the 24, and that's it. Warren Sapp on the stop. We saw the problem that Micah Knorr had on one of the holds that they kicked before. Jason Elam basically kicked the ball through laying flat on the ground. Jake Plummer continues to be very composed in what he wants to do. I guess you could call him the fourth quarter comeback kid. This drive, he's doing it with his legs. Now he steps up inside, knows how far he wants to get, hits the ground. Now he does it with his feet. Rod Smith with the big pickup. And they continue to move down. Now Jake again gets rid of it quick to Triando Sloop. Whether they come after him, whether they let him sit back in the pocket, he's been able to come up with the plays he's needed. Right now they're at the 25-yard line. The one thing you're looking at they can't afford is to take a sack and take them out of field goal range. It's a 42-yard field goal right now. 42-43. The thing that, you know, they're going to come after him. I, I, I got to believe that the Raiders are going to send, send at least seven people. Go! Got nothing to lose. Drones goes to a win. Four-man rush. Plummer for the corner. It looked like Watts had a shot that went through his hands. Well, Philip Buchanan absolutely misjudged the ball. He got turned around. Watch Jake throw this. Darius Watts is in the end zone, number 17. Philip Buchanan, number 31. Goes, oh. It does. It goes right through his hands. The rookie was open in the corner of the end zone, and now it's up to Elam. Uh, His only misses this year are from 49 and 51 yards. Well, the Denver Broncos just, I mean, the clock had stopped, but they took their final timeout. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the Raiders just turn around and do the same thing and ice them. And there are so many variables on this kick. You've got the field condition. Right. You've got Elam. Can he plant his foot solid enough? Can Mike Anor get the ball down so that it's standing up so that he can get the distance on it? Now you see everybody out here clearing a patch for the kicker. They can't bring anyone from the sideline out with a shovel or any other implement to clear it out. But you can use either your hand or your foot. The other thing you have to consider if you're the Oakland Raiders is you know that this kick's going to come out low. So the thing you've got to do is you've got to get as big a push. This, this is where you put the big guys in the middle. You put Warren Sapp in the middle. You put Ted Washington in the middle. And you get as big a push as you can and let somebody tall get up and try and knock it back. Elam is 18 out of 20. He's already hit from 32. This to take the lead from 42. You can't use anybody to get in the air. It blocked it. I think it was Warren Sapp. No, it wasn't Warren. It was Langston, Langston Walker. Walker. A guy who lost his right tackle job to Robert Gallery comes up with a huge block. Big push up the middle. I'll tell you what, just uh, exactly what you were talking about, Joe. Look at the push and then get up in the air. Langston Walker, number 66, I mean, he went straight up, which you had to do. Everything you said was absolutely perfect. It's going to come out low. you got to get your arms up. It's over. Six feet eight. Six eight, 345. Kerry Collins, yes. And if he'd been six seven, he couldn't have stopped it. <laughs> that extra inch doesn't hurt. You knew it had to come out that way. What a huge, huge play for the Oakland Raiders to preserve a one-point lead. And they come into Denver against a bitter rival. And they have stunned the Denver Broncos.
and how much this will affect the Broncos' chances of making the playoffs remains to be seen. They have a huge game next week against San Diego. They'll have their chance. At least San Diego is sitting there waiting on them. What a ball game. The final score, 25-24 Raiders.